Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if God like Naruto neglected because of the prophecy harem. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by SOUL23 and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1, we find an 8 years old girl with blood red hair with blonde around the edge, jumping up and down with joy because she had just perfected a very hard jutsu. Alright I did it. Did you see me daddy? The girl asked a man with spiky blonde hair that had two bangs hanging on each side of his face. Yes I did Naruko very good. The man said praising his daughter as a woman with blood red hair came out. Come on you two let's go get some ramen. She said. This got a cheer from Naruko and the family walked into the house. What they failed to notice was a blonde haired boy that was the same age as the girl that just left. He had vibrant blue eyes just like his father, in fact one would have to be blind not to see the resemblance. The only difference was the length of his hair and the three whisker-like marks on each of his cheeks. This boy was Naruto Namaka's son of Minato Namaka's and Kashina Yuzumaki, and the container of the soul of the Kaiubi no Kitsune. He didn't hate it just didn't trust his family because they always chose Naruko over him, and it got to the point where the only time he ever showed his face around the house was at breakfast and at dinner. He asked his godparents to train him, but they didn't care about him, but only her sister even Kakashi the last surviving member of Team Minato ignored him. But all that changed after that incident happened. Flashback, three years ago, five years old Naruto was walking around the village, and most of the villagers ignore him, since none of them knew about him. Only few people know him, but he didn't bother much. So he decided to explore outside the village and went to the forest. When he started to wander around the forest he reaches a small cave. Curiosity got the best of him so he decided to go inside. He continues to go forward until he saw something that caught his interest. In the center of the cave there was a beautiful sheath that was gold with blue markings and has a small writing on it. Naruto looks at the writing carefully, then the writings change into a language for him to understand and that said Avalon. Avalon. Naruto asked in confused and suddenly the sheath started to glow bright and that forced him to cover his eyes. Slowly the light faded away and Naruto finally opened his eyes and found himself in new area. The place was beautiful where the sky was so clear and was in the middle of the field, but he saw a house from a far distance. Hello little one what are you doing here? A voice said. Naruto turns around to see a beautiful young woman. She had blonde hair that was tied in a bun, green eyes, and was wearing a simple white dress. Before Naruto could respond another voice interrupted them. Saber. A voice called Naruto saw a man with red hair that was wearing black cloth running towards them. Shiru Saber said, and the Shiru stops in beside her and was about to talk when he suddenly noticed Naruto. Hello there. Shiru said as he approaches him and kneel down to his level. Naruto just waved shyly at him. Who are you kid? Shiru asked. Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Naruto introduced himself and Shiru stands up. I'm Shiru Amiya and this woman here is Arthuria Pendragon, but you can call her Saber. Shiru said and Arthuria just smiled at Naruto. Anyway what are you doing or should I say how did you get here? Shiru asked and Naruto just tilted his head to side with confused look on his face. Naruto started to explain what happened after he was done the two were surprised by this. Shiru approaches Saber and whispered. Saber do you think that he's the one? Saber then whispered to him. I think remember the dream that we were having and someone told us about a prophecy that someone will show up through Avalon and destined to save the world. Saber whispered and Shira nodded at her, then they turned back their attention to Naruto. Um, do you any of you know how will I return home? Naruto asked and the two nodded at him. Yes Naruto but first there's something you need to know. Shiru said and Naruto nodded at him. Naruto, the reason that you brought here is because of the prophecy. Shiru said. Prophecy? Naruto asked confused and Shiru and Saber nodded at him. Yes the prophecy told us that one day when someone will appear here through Avalon is the one that will save the world. Saber said. Huh? Naruto asked in confused and the two adults eyes but just nodded at each other. They knew that Naruto was too young to know these things. Anyway, we wanted to say that reason that you're here is because you are going to be trained by us. Shiru stated and Naruto eyes widen in shock and then a big grin appeared on his face. Alright I'm finally going to be trained. Naruto shouted happily while the two looked at him confused. What do you mean by that Naruto? Arthuria asked and Naruto suddenly had a sad look on his face and the two heroes frown at this. Naruto what's wrong? Shiru asked and Naruto started to tell his story. He told on how his parents ignored him even the people close to his family ignored him and they only focused on his twin sister. When he was done telling his story the two just felt sorry for Naruto for being neglected and disappointment to his family and people around him. Shiru placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder and Naruto looked up to see that Shiru was smiling at him. Don't worry Naruto once we're done training you. You will be strongest hero that they will ever see. 
Shiru said and Naruto looked at him with wide eyes, then looked at Arthuria who nodded at him with smile on her face. Naruto grinned and nodded at them. Hi. Naruto chirped happily, and the three of them walked towards the house and for Naruto to start his training. Flashback ended, ever since Naruto then Naruto was training non-stop and was enjoying his life with Shiru and Saber. Shiru taught him the basics such as crests, circuits, prana, odd and mana, then started to teach about mage crafts such as projection, barrier and other magics that he know that he learned when he become a counter guardian, while Saber taught him prana burst, reinforcement magic and invisible air that were own personal skills. Shiru taught him to use a two blades and using a bow since he was an archer. Saber teaches him her sword style and battle tactics. The two were really surprised that Naruto was able to absorb everything like a sponge. He was a prodigy when came to battle. The two really pushed him to his limit until he would fall. The two were surprised on Naruto by his fighting spirit and drive to become strong. Both heroes were proud seeing this and believed that he would be able to become a true hero. Also Naruto picked some of Shiru hobby, such as learning to cook, sewing and other skills. Sometimes Naruto would cook for the two, and they were surprised that Naruto was very good at cooking. The three bonded like family and Naruto was really happy, but saddened that he would be leaving soon. Naruto learned on Shiru and Saber previously life where he was inspired by both heroes' stories and wanted to become like them, so he made a goal that he would become like Archer and Saber. Twenty years later, Naruto who was now 25 years old he was a splitting image of Minato, the only exception was the whisker mark. He was wearing a simple white shirt, blue pants and a pair of sneakers. He was facing Shiru and Saber who small smile on their face. Naruto, our mission is done your training is complete. Saber stated and Naruto just nodded at them. He knew that this day would come and he would be going back to the elemental nation. Shiru and Saber explained about the place that time in the elemental nation will pause, so he won't need to worry about anything. Naruto there are few things that you need to know before you leave. Shiru said and Naruto looked at him with confused look. What is it Shiru Nyasen? Naruto asked. Well the thing is that when you leave all that you learned will be sealed away except your memories. Shiru said and Naruto had horror look on his face. What? Then all those hard training that we had will be nothing then why did you train me in the first place, if they are just going to be sealed away? Naruto demand and Saber raised her hand that has signals him to stop talking. He wasn't done explaining Naruto. Saber said and Naruto immediately apologize, and Shiru just sighs at him. As I was saying your abilities in using my magic are only sealed away temporary, but you can still you use of Saber magic and skills that she thought you. Your powers will be released at once when the time is right, the only problem is that your body will become a kid again when you return to your world. Shiru said and Naruto just sighs in relief and disappointment. Relief because his magic won't disappear and disappointment because he will become a kid again, meaning that he would have to train his body again, then it was Saber turn to talk. Last thing Naruto when you return to your world I want you to take Avalon with you and take it to the lake that is near the cave. Once you got to the lake call the lady of the lake and she will do the rest understand. Saber asked and Naruto just nodded at her. Shiru approaches at Naruto and gave him a hug that surprised him by his surrogate brother actions, but just went to the flow and hugged him back. Naruto remember to live your life with no regrets, protect everyone who is precious to you, and no matter what me and Saber see you as a family. Shiru said and Naruto eyes widened in hearing those words he was touched. He let tears flow down to his cheek as hugged Shiru tightly, and Saber joined in the hug, and they stayed like that several seconds before the broke it. Thank you for everything Shiru Nyasen and Arthurianichan. Naruto said happily then Naruto started to glow slowly faded away. Back to the elemental nation, Naruto opened his eyes and found himself in his five years old body again. He sighs in disappointment because he really wanted his powers that he learned then something was glowing in Naruto's hand. He looked at saw a symbol as being made when the light was gone, it revealed to be a sword covered with a sheath with two wings on the side. Naruto smiled at symbol and looked at the Avalon. He grabbed the Avalon walk away from the cave and started to find the lake that Saber told him that was near the cave. After wandering around the forest for an hour looking for the lake he finally found it. He walked towards near the lake and placed the Avalon down near it. Naruto looked at the lake for several seconds before he said. Lady of the lake. Naruto called and the lake started to bubble, and the middle of the lake was glowing, then soon stream of waters were shoot out of the water, then started twirl around the center of the lake. Then a figure was being formed, then it was done it reveals a beautiful woman with long chestnut hair, porcelain skin and a long blue dress. The woman walks towards Naruto. Hello child why are you here? The woman said and Naruto showed her Avalon and the woman eyes widened and a small smile appeared on her face. So, Arthuria decided you to become the next wielder of her weapons, but I want to make sure first. The woman said as she places her hand on top of Naruto's head and started to look at his memories. She was saddened at how Naruto was neglected by his family and people around him, but was also happy that he was able to receive happiness through Shiru and Arthuria and view them as his idols and siblings. The woman removed her hand from Naruto's head and kneels down to Naruto level. 
Naruto-kun I'm going to give Arthuria sword the sword that made her a legend. The woman said then she walked back near the lake and put her hands on the water. She pulls out something out of the water and revealed to be sword that radiating a divine light. Naruto was awestruck in seeing the sight of the blade. When the divine light was gone the woman asked Naruto for the Avalon and Naruto gave it to her. The woman puts the sword in the sheath and soon it was releasing a strong divine light and was floating in the air. The woman turns to Naruto and said to him. Naruto-kun I'm gonna to seal the sword and sheath to you, but there will be consequences in doing this. The woman said and Naruto looked at her confused. Consequences? Naruto said and the woman nodded at him. Yes but first are you aware that the soul of the Kaiubi is sealed inside of you? The woman asked and Naruto nodded at her. He knew the Kaiubi was sealed to him since he was four years old when he asked for some training to parents who ignored him. And just to let everyone know Naruto never met the Kaiubi during his training with Shiro and Saber. Well once the Excalibur and Avalon are sealed inside of you the Kaiubi soul will be transferred to your twin sister. The woman told him and Naruto eyes widened and surprised and quickly nodded at her in understanding. He wanted to become like Saber or Shiru, and if exchanging the soul to Kaiubi to her sister will give him the two weapons that Saber once wielded, he will do it. The woman smiled at Naruto and weapons slowly floated towards Naruto, then formed into a small orb and entered Naruto's body. He felt a strong divine light pouring out of his body, and his body released a strong light. But soon the light died and Naruto look at the woman who was smiling at Naruto. It's done Naruto come look at your stomach. The woman said and Naruto lifted his shirt and saw the seal that once was in his stomach was gone and soon his left hand started to create some symbols. When it was done Naruto looked at symbol and saw the picture of the sword and sheath that has the color blue. Naruto thanked the woman and the woman just ruffles his hair. Naruto-kun I have a special gift for you. The woman said and soon Naruto was being surrounded by streams of water. Few moments later Naruto found himself wearing an armor. And. Just think male saber armor. Naruto was amazed by this, and suddenly the armor disappeared and returned to his normal clothes. Naruto looked confused and the woman just giggled at him. Don't worry Naruto-kun you can access the armor when you are in battle. The woman said and Naruto nodded in understanding. Um, can I know the name of the lady of the lake? Naruto asked, and the woman was surprised at Naruto's words but smiled at him. My name is Vivian, you can come and visit me anytime you want Naruto-kun. Vivian said and Naruto grinned at her and thanked her before she dissolved into the water. Naruto runs back to the village to retrain his body and to fulfill his goal. Flashback ended. Ever since that day Naruto was training non-stop to regain his skill that he acquired through Shiro and Saber training. He continues his sword practice, archery, and tried to master Saber skills in using invisible air, reinforcement magic, and prana burst once again. Naruto tried to ask help once again to his parents and godparents with his shinobi training, only to shun again. So decided to sneak to the family library and steal some scrolls and books about chakra and sealing. Naruto did several chakra exercises to have more control of his chakra, and apparently Naruto got interested in using Fuenjutsu. He experimented and created countless of seals from book and using his own formulas. Naruto also found out that he was wind, fire and water user, so he decided to get some water, fire and wind jutsus from the clan library. He also found an interesting jutsu in the scroll of forbidden and found shadow clone jutsu. He was surprised in what the jutsu can do apparently everything that clone absorbs will be transferred back to him, which was very useful for him to regain his skills. Five years later, now Naruto was 13 years old and was wearing a black shirt, baggy pants and standard shinobi sandals. Naruto grew quiet, level-headed and secretive, since was only being ignored by the people around him. He sometimes wished that he can stay with Shiro and Saber, or sometimes they were his parents. Growing up being ignored by most people made Naruto less trustful towards people around him. He doesn't hate his family or anyone he just didn't trust them. Naruto was going down the stairs and saw Naruko with his parents. Through the years Kasumi was the only who really tried to talk to Naruto and try to be friend with him, but because of the attention she was receiving from others, Naruto just ignores her or disappear on the spot. Naruko grown into a wonderful woman her hair was longer that reaches until her waist. Her body developed so much that would put many women in shame, a perfect hergless figure, large sea cup breast and nice fur mass. She was wearing a red shirt, black shorts, short white apron and standard shinobi sandals. Naruko was the first one to notice Naruto and waved at him. Ani-chan. Naruko said happily and Naruto had a small smile on his face in seeing Naruko. Naruto was happy that Naruko tries to reach out for him, but he doesn't have much trust to her. Morning Naruto Kashina greeted him, and Naruto just nodded at her, Minato approaches at Naruto and cleared his throat. Naruto if you pass the genin exam you will be starting to be training with Naruko. Minato said. Do Sandos that mean that Ani-chan will finally train with me? Naruko asked with happy tone, and Kashina answered her. Yes Naruko if only your Ani-chan will only pass the genin exam. I'm not interested. Naruto said as he suddenly cuts in the conversation. 
Everyone had a disbelief look on their face when they heard this. Um Naruto did I hear right you don't want to be trained by us? Don't want to learn to be strong like me and your mother? Minato asked with disbelief, and Naruto had his arm crossed and nodded at him. Yes I don't have any interest but first answer this. Why did you and Kishina suddenly have interest to train me? Naruto asked with neutral tone. Well it's because, let me guess a few theories that I see. You both felt guilty for neglecting me, so you both decided to train me until you're both not guilty anymore, or you the Hokujin clan head don't want the village to see that any of your child weak. Naruto explained with neutral look and voice. Everyone again was shocked again on how Naruto said it with neutral look on his face. If you don't have any more to say I'll get going come on Naruko. Naruto said as he walks out from the house with Naruko and leaving two shocked parents. But Naruto and Naruko. Ani chan, why did you say that? Naruko said as they headed towards the academy. Naruto sighs, stops to his track and look at his sister. Naruko, how would you feel that you've been neglected by everyone around you for so long? Naruto asked and Naruko thought about it and decided to stay quiet. She knew that she was the reason that he was neglected even on their birthday, she was the only one who received present while he just stand in the corner and watch. Naruko got depressed and blame herself for Naruto being neglected until she was cut off in her train of thoughts when Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder and looked at him. Naruko I know what you are thinking and I don't hate you or blame you. I'm just the unlucky twin that's all. Naruto said and he gave her a small smile and Naruko just nodded at him. They continued their way to the academy then soon they heard noises once they entered the academy. Naruto-kun. Hello, Naruto-kun. Look over here Naruto-kun. Naruto sighs as he heard his fangirls. Naruto was the top student of the academy and excel all of his subjects, but most of the time Naruto would use a shadow clone to leave class and do some real training. Naruto and Naruko enter the classroom and take their seat, and Naruka who was the instructor of the academy, enters the classroom. Alright everyone today is the genin exam this will determine if you have the skills to become a ninja. Once your name is called please go to the other room and perform the following jutsus body replacement jutsu, transformation jutsu and clone jutsu. Iruka said then soon one by one the students are being called. Naruto Uzumaki Namaka's Iruka called and Naruto stands up from his seat and went to exam room. Moments later Naruto was back to the classroom with his forehead protector. Moments later, many parents were chatting to their children. Some were happy that they their children were able to graduate while some were disappointed. Minato and Kishina just arrived at the academy looking for their children. Ha-san. Tu-san. A familiar voice shouted. They saw their daughter running towards them. Look, look I did it. She said happily as showed her forehead protector. Yes you did it. Minato said happily. We are so proud of you. Kishina said happily. Then they spotted Naruto heading towards the exit. Naruto Kishina said getting his attention then the trio runs walk up towards him. I'm really happy. Save it for someone who cares. Naruto said coldly. I don't trust you or anyone in the village only a few people. I'll be training and will go home late so don't wait up for me. Naruto said before he walks away and ignoring her mother who started to form tears in her eyes. Kishina, someday he will forgive us. Minato said as he tried to comfort her. Ani-san doesn't hate any of you. Naruko said and both parents look at her. He just doesn't trust anyone except a few people who tried to befriend with him. Naruko said and Minato decided to change the subject. Anyway how is he in class? Minato asked, well Ani-chan is the best student of the class and the rookie to the year. He was good at using swords, an instructor said that he might be down in level. Naruko said causing both parents to look at her with shock. They hang their head in shame and hearing this. They never knew that their son was a prodigy and he did it all without their help. Our son is genius and we failed to support him. Minato and Kishina thought sadly. But Naruto. Naruto was in the training grounds 44 or known as the Forest of Death. He was about to enter the forest when suddenly he senses was coming towards him and immediately jumped to his side to see that he avoided kunai. He landed safely to ground and looked around to see a woman with light brown eyes, violet hair that was tied into a small ponytail. She was wearing a tan overcoat, complete with a fitted mesh bodysuit that stretches from her neck down to her thigh and dark orange miniskirt, and she was wearing a Kanoha forehead protector. This woman is Anko Midarashi who was a former student of Arachimaru who was one the Sanin of Kanoha. Hey Gaki this training ground is off limits. The Anko said and Naruto just rolled his eyes. Who the hell are you anyway and why did you attack me? Naruto asked and the woman had sadistic smirk on her face. How about you beat me first and I might just tell you. The Anko said as brought out another kunai and charges at Naruto while he was just standing there and waiting for the attack. The woman was closing in was about to strike Naruto when he suddenly counter it by grabbing her wrist and flip the woman, causing Anko face first to the ground, then Naruto immediately lock her arms with one hand, grab the kunai from the woman hand, and pointed it towards her neck. How the hell? The woman asked in shock in what just happened in seconds. She looks at Naruto and her eyes widen when he looks at his eyes. 
they carried no emotion at all they were cold and lifeless. They stayed like that for several seconds before Naruto let go of the woman and walked towards to the top of the fence of the forest. The woman immediately stands up while holding her left injured arm from the hold that Naruto did to her. Oi I said that's off limit. The Anko said and Naruto turned his body to face her. Next time try not to charge so reckless like an idiot. Naruto said before entering the forest and not seeing the angry look on Anko face. When I get my hands on that Gaki I will still that kid was pretty interesting. He was able to caught me off guard and switch the tables. I can say that kid is not an ordinary ninja. Anko thought with smirk on her face. She was looking forward and seeing him again. But Naruto. Naruto was making his way to the center of the forest as he slaughtering every creature that was coming towards him with his katana that sealed in his wrist. Few hours later Naruto finally reaches the center of the forest and saw a tower there. He then used reinforcement and chakra towards his feet, then jumps to the air with bursting speed and landed safely to the top. Naruto sighs and was deep in his thoughts and started to think Shiru and Saber. Shiru nice and Saber Nichin Naruto muttered as he let out small shed of tears to his eyes. He really misses being with Shiru and Saber. He knew that they were finally in paradise, and they are also watching him in the sky. Shiru nice and Saber Nichani vow that I will become a hero I will join you both in paradise when my mission has done Naruto thought as he prayed for the two watch over the heavens. Chapter 2. Night time. Naruto was done with training in the forest of death and decided to go home, then he suddenly senses something was wrong, then he decided to use reinforcement magic to his eyes and ears. He started to hear metals clashing and look where it was coming from. He jumped from tree to tree and went towards the gate walls of the village to get a better view. He scanned around the village then his narrowed as he found where two chunin battling out Naruto eyes widen as he saw who were the two ninjas were fighting. He saw Aruka and Mizuki were fighting, but were confused why they were fighting until he found the scroll of sealing and Mizuki back. Naruto eyes narrowed and now understand the situation. He knew that Mizuki was a traitor from the start. He immediately rushes towards the two chunin and to aid Aruka. But Mizuki and Aruka. Aruka and Mizuki were battling against each other, and Mizuki has upper hand. If the scroll back Mizuki Aruka demanded and Mizuki just laugh at him. But the scroll I will be unbeatable. Mizuki said then throws a barrage of kunai. Aruka tried to move but he was injured. He closed his eyes waited for the kunais to kill him. Well this item going to die Aruka thought then he heard sounds of kunai being deflected. He opened his eyes and was shocked who he saw Naruto. Naruto Mizuki said and Naruto just glared at him. Mizuki I knew that you were a traitor from the start the way you were looking at Naruko thinking that she's the Kai Ubi. You're a complete idiot. You don't know difference between a scroll and a kunai. Naruto said. Mizuki gritted his teeth and looking at Naruto with hateful eyes. I know that she's the demon. Yandane was just too blind to see it. Mizuki shouted and grabbed a kunai behind his pouch, but before he could even pull out his kunai Naruto appeared in front of him and deliver a blow to his shoulder. Snap. Mizuki screamed as his shoulder bone was dislocated, then Naruto follows it with a punch in the gut, and Mizuki was out cold. Naruto summoned two clones and ordered them to tie Mizuki to the tree. The clones did what they were told while he runs towards Aruka. Aruka sensei, are you okay? Naruto asked and Aruka put a weak smile on him. Yeah I'm okay now Naruto. Aruka said and Naruto did some hand seals, and his hand began to glow green and place his hand on Aruka wounds, and they started to heal them. Moments later, Anbu arrived to the scene and found Mizuki tied to a tree, while Naruto was just done healing Aruka. What happened here? An Anbu wearing a cat mask asked. Naruto explained the situation, and when he was done the Anbu were impressed on how Naruto easily defeated Mizuki and being able to do medical jutsu at young age. All right the cat Anbu said good job Namika's sama. Naruto just nodded at her before he headed home. One of the Anbu grabbed Aruka to escort him home, while others grabbed Mizuki and scroll and headed towards the tower. Hokage Tower. That concludes my report Hokage-sama. The cat Anbu informed the Yandane with the advisors. Anbu dropped Mizuki to the T&I department for interrogation before heading to the Hokage Tower. Kata Yugao Yuzuki reported in exact same detail on how Naruto reported to her. Alright thank you for the report cat. You may leave now. Minato said and cat nodded at him before disappearing in puff of smoke. Minato your boy is a genius. Hamura said. I agree with him Minato. Your boy easily beaten a Chunin level ninja and was able to use medical ninjutsu in a young age. Hiruzen said. He is level-headed, intelligent he is a perfect example of a shinobi. Kaharu said and Minato nodded and were saddened that he or Kishina had done nothing to his development. All right now, how about we talk about the team placement? Minato said and the advisors nodded at him. Two days later, it was morning and Naruto wakes from his bed and did his morning routine. Now Naruto was now picking out a new set of clothes from closet that he made since today was the team placement. He was really thankful that he picks up some of Shiru hobby, because most the clothes shop that he went wasn't suited for his taste. He was now wearing a black open collared waistcoat with a sleeve covering his right arm. 
On the back it has picture of a sword with white wings on the guard of the sword. He was wearing black anbu pants, pair of fingerless gloves, and instead of shinobi sandals, he was wearing a pair of boots. Naruto looked himself at the mirror and smiled at his new appearance, then went to his desk and grabbed a small necklace that has the symbol of yin and yang. He wears it around his neck before walking out from his room. Naruto walks downstairs to see Naruko and his parents at the dining table. Ishina was the first one to see Naruto and was surprised by his new appearance, but pushed her thoughts aside. Good morning Naruto Kishina greeted and Naruto just nodded at her, and Naruko turns around and was surprised by his brother new appearance and couldn't help but blush. Naruto notice it. Is there something wrong Naruko? Your face is turning red. Naruto points out and Naruko eyes widen and quickly turned around and continued to eat her food. Both parents were surprised by their daughter reaction and the blush they saw on her face, but quickly pushed their thoughts aside when Naruto joins the table and started to eat his food. So, are you both excited to meet the team placement? Kishina asked, yeah I am. I hope it get to Ani-chan as my teammate. Naruko chirped happily while Naruto just ignored her question and eat his food. Kishina and Minato mentally sighs they knew that Naruto would answer it because like Naruko told them he won't open up to them, then Kishina decided to ask some random question. So Naruto where did you get that clothes I never saw that kind of clothing before. Kishina said. I made it. Naruto said plainly and everyone was surprised. Really Ani-chan I never knew you know how to make clothes and the design is great. Naruko said and Naruto sends a small smile to her. Well the clothes shop I went didn't have my liking, so I decided to make some clothes and learn from a friend of mine. Naruto said which made everyone curious on who was Naruto referring to. Before they could question him more Naruto suddenly stands up from his seat and said. I'm going ahead Naruko I'll see you at academy. Thanks for the food Naruto said as he left the dining table and walks out from the house when Naruto was gone, both parents eyes in disappointment. Well at least he's not completely cold toward us. Minato said and Kashina nodded at him. I'm going now Kachan, Tusan. Naruko said as she ran out to the house and headed to the academy also. Both parents sigh and look at each other with sad smile on their face. I guess we better get going. Kashina said and both parents did the dishes before heading towards the Hokage Tower. But Naruto and Naruko. Naruto and Naruko were walking in the hallways of the academy and most of the student there greeted them. Naruto and Naruko arrived at the classroom and have taken their seat. Naruto had bored look on his face and was about to fall asleep until he felt a pair of arms wrapped around him. Hello, Naruto-kun. A familiar voice said. Naruto just sighs and turns his head to see a girl that has pink hair, green eyes and large forehead. The girl was smiling at him this girl is known as Sakura Hirano a civilian girl and the girl that Naruto saved when she was being bullied. Flashback, oh look it's forehead girl one of the class bullies said. Ahaha, her forehead sure makes a nice target practice one of girls said as she grabbed a stone. No, please don't. Seven years old Sakura pleaded and the bully throws the stone, targeting her forehead. She shielded her eyes and waited for the stone to strike her again. Clang. Sakura opened her eyes only to see the stone was on the ground with shuriken on the center. You know picking on a defenseless girls is pretty pathetic don't you think? Naruto asked as he appeared in the scene with his on his pocket. Who the hell are you? The leader of the bullies asked and Naruto just ignored his question. I gonna say this once leave now or face the consequences. Naruto said and one of the bullies recklessly charges at Naruto with his fist ready. Naruto sidestepped to avoid the attack easily, then grabbed his wrist and knee strike him to the stomach that sends the bully flying straight to the tree and knocking the bully out. Everyone was shocked in what they saw. The bullies were scared shitless while Sakura was awe in what Naruto did. Let's get out of here. The leader shouted as his group started to run away leaving other one behind. Naruto was disgusted by this and summoned two clones and ordered them to catch the bullies. The clones chased the bullies with a genin level speed and easily knocked them out cold. Moments later, the bullies started to wake up and found them tied to a tree with ninja wires, and the two clones were besides them, and Naruto was standing in front of them with arms crossed and were glaring at them. Bullying a defenseless girl is one of the things that I hate. Naruto said then he pulls out a kunai from his pouch, and the bullies swallow the lump on their throat and scared look on their face. I heard about making the girl at target practice how about I make all of you make target practice now. Naruto asked as pulls out couple of kunai said shurikens. The kids turned pale and started pleading at him. Please don't kill us. We're sorry. I want my mommy. Naruto had enough and put his weapons away and told the clones to remove the ropes. The clones did what they were told and released the bullies. Naruto gave them a death glare and the bullies flinch at this. Next time if I see you all picking on her or any other student, I'll make sure to make you all my target practices. Got it? Naruto asked with threatening tone. Hi. The bullies shouted before they all run away. Naruto just shook his head and turned his attention to Sakura. Are you alright? Naruto asked. Sakura just nodded at him while blushing. 
Naruto noticed a small cut on her forehead. Hold still. Naruto said as his hand began to glow green and place his hand on her forehead. Sakura blushed even more by the sudden contact. Few seconds later the cut was gone and Naruto smiled at her. They're all better. Naruto said. Yes, thanks for saving Yume. Naruto Naruto Uzumaki Namikis. Naruto said and Sakura eyes widened in shock. Your Yandame's son. Sakura shouted Naruto just smiled at her. Yes he's my dad, but doesn't mean that I wanted to treat me differently, I just want you treat me like any other people. How about we start again hi I'm Naruto Uzumaki Namikis. Naruto said as he extended his hand and Sakura smiled at him and shake his hand. Sakura Haruno. Flashback ended, hey Sakura-chan. Naruto said happily and he started to notice the killing intent coming from the girls, and he turns to his sister who was glaring daggers at Sakura. Naruto inwardly sigh. He remember his talk with Shiru about girls. Forehead, get away from my Naruto-kun. A voice said, and that voice belongs to a blonde hair girl with blue pupil s eyes and wearing purple clothing. This girl is Ino Yamanaka. She one of the girls who had huge crush on Naruto. She met Naruto in her family flower shop, and it was first love in sight, so she immediately tried to get to know him. Naruto with his friendly attitude was able to make friends of the girl. Sakura was glared Ino was about to speak until another voice beat her to it. No he's my Naruto-kun. The girl voice belongs to a girl that has long black silky hair and black eyes. This girl was wearing a blue sleeveless jacket that has a chia symbol on the back, a black strap slightly above her stomach and black pants and standard shinobi sandals. This girl was Atsuki Achiha the sister of Achiha Tachi, who was a prodigy of Konoha. She was also one of the girls that Naruto save in kidnapping incident happened in Konoha, along with Hinata Hayuga, who was the heiress of the Hayuga clan. Flashback, a shadow figure was running roof to roof and was carrying a huge bag on his back. This too easy this village security really needs to rework its defense. The figure said and the sack started to move around was shouting at him to let them go. The figure just sneered at them and dropped the back harshly and picked it up again. Shut it you brats the figure hissed. How about you drop the sack and leave? A voice said and the figure turns around to see 8 years old Naruto glaring at him. Be the kid. The figure sneered at him. The blink of an eye Naruto appeared in front of him and delivered a blow to gut, causing the figure to drop the sack and hold his stomach in pain. Naruto followed it with an uppercut punch to jaw that sends figure flying upward and ending it with an axe kick to back that nearly shattered the ground as cracks appeared when impact was made. The figure was unconscious and Naruto brought out couple of ninja wires and tied the shadow figure up. When he was done he walks towards the sack with kunai in his hand and cuts the sack revealing two young girls. Both girls had tears on their eyes and were hugging each other tightly. The girl with black hair opened her eyes and saw Naruto standing before them. It's okay now the man who kidnaps you both is defeated. Naruto said as kneel down to them and place his hands on their shoulders to calm, then he was surprised by their reaction. They suddenly launched themselves at Naruto and cling on him as if their life was on the line. Naruto just closed his eyes and hugged both girls and whispered comforting words to them. Flashback ended, the man who kidnapped them turns out to be the Kumo ambassador, but after interrogated by the sadistic Ibiki, it turns out that the Kumo Nin was a fake, and the treaty was nothing because the fake Kumo Nin was a member of a local bandit who sells children to other villages. Both clans thank Naruto for his heroic deed. Yuguku and Hiashi wanted to have arranged marriage their daughters with Naruto, but he quickly turns it down because he told them that he wasn't interested. All three girls were glaring at each other, and soon the girls around the room started to fight over Naruto. Naruto did the wise decision and sneak away and hide in the corner to avoid the riot of all girls' war. Well here we go again. A boy said with black hair that was in the style of a pineapple. This boy was Shikamaru Nara. He is one Naruto best friends and lazy person, but he was smartest one in the class. Munch I agree Munch a fat boy said that has brown spiky hair. This kid is known as Jouji Akamichi. He is also one Naruto best friends and they share great interest in food and currently eating a bag of chips. Man Naruto I'm really jealous of you getting all the girls to fight over you. A boy whine, this boy has messy brown hair and has red fangs marking on each side of his cheek. This boy is known as Kibut in Yuzuka also one Naruto best friends and self-proclaimed rival of Naruto which the blonde has no problem, and he has a companion named Akamaru, who is a small white puppy that rides on his head. Naruto sighs at this pulls out something from the pocket and reveals to be small paper bag. Naruto grabs something inside and reveals to donut shaped bread. Hey Naruto what's that? Kiba asked. Oh, it's just some food that I made. Want some? There are three more in the bag. Naruto said as he passed the bag and the each of them took one donut. The three of them examined the bread and the trio looks at each other and then shrugged and took a bite of the donuts. Then all three boys eyes widened and golden light started to come out from where they bit. Oh my god. Shikamaru said in shock. This so delicious. 
Kiba said and Akamaru got confused until he also took a bite of the donut, then Akamaru was frozen few seconds, then suddenly fainted with happy expression on his face. Well I'm glad you all like it. Naruto said then he turns to Chaoji who still had shock expression on his face. Um, Chaoji are you okay? Shikamaru asked as he waved a hand in front of him, until Chaoji suddenly bowed his head to the floor in front of Naruto. Teach me your ways chosen one. Chaoji said, and everyone in the room was surprised even the girls who having an all-out rumble. Ani chan what happened? Naruko said as she is was currently holding one the girls in a headlock. Naruko looked at Naruto hands and her eyes widen in shock. Ani chan why did you not tell me that you were sharing your delicious homemade donuts? You know that I love your foods Naruko shouted. Naruko knew that his brother was great cook, she even complimented him that was able to outcook a five-star chef. Naruko always loved his brother food especially his dessert foods. Everyone in the room had surprised look in hearing that top student of the academy and the son Yandame can cook. Big deal it's just a piece of bread a random boy said, and Naruko furious shook her head. You don't understand Ani chan cooking are like first-rate chef. Once you tasted it you feel like you've been to heaven. Just look at Kiba Naruko pointed out and they look at him and saw that he was happily eating the donut with dreamy look on his face. Chaoji what do you think of Ani chan bread? Naruko asked and Chaoji face her with serious look on his face. His food is a gift from heaven they are even better than our restaurant food. Chaoji stated and everyone except Naruko was surprised by this. The Akamichi restaurant is one of the best restaurants in Konoha and hearing from the Akamichi, saying Naruto food was better than theirs was surprising. Suddenly the door opened and reveals to Aruka who had few bandages on his face. He was surprised to see what was happening in the room. Everyone please return to your seat. Aruka said and most of the class ignored him and he twitched mark near his eyebrows. I said everyone seat down now. Aruka ordered with big scary face and everyone immediately returns to their seat. Aruka clears his throat and started to give out his speech. As Aruka continues to talk Naruto was praying that end this quickly as possible, because most of the girls in the class looking at Naruto with hungry look on their eyes that sends shiver to his spine. Now I'm gonna tell your teammates and sensei. Team 1 soon teams are called one by one. Team 7 consists of Naruto Uzumaki Namikas this raised his head and anticipated who was going to be his teammates while the girls are praying, hoping that they would paired up with the blonde. Sakura Haruno Sakura squealed in happiness. Naruko Uzumaki Namikas. Her Naruko did the same. And Satsuki Acha. Aruka finished and Satsuki was the last one to squeal and Naruto and small smile on his face hearing that having his sister and friends being his teammates. Your senseis are Kakashi Haddock and Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas. Aruka said the four of them were surprised. The made members are Shino Aburam, Hayuga Hinata and Kiba Inuzuka. Your sensei is Kurana Yuhi. Team 9 is still in the roster and for team 10 members are Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka and Chaoji Akamichi. Your sensei is Asuma Siratobi Aruka finished. No oh, I got a lazy ass and fat boy. Ino whined earning a glare from Chaoji for calling him fat while earning a side disappointment from Naruto for disrespecting his friends. You will see your sensei at lunchtime dismiss. Aruka said before leaving the classroom. Ani chan do you want to have lunch with me? Naruko asked as she turns around to face him only to find that Naruto was gone. Hey, where is Naruto-kun? Sakura asked. Naruto run away from the classroom because he doesn't want dealing with his fangirls, now they know him being great cook and all. Shikamaru answered lazily. But Naruto. Naruto was in the Hokage Monument eating some homemade food and was enjoying the view. Naruto felt a familiar chakra around the field and he let out a few chuckles. I know you're there Itachi-san you can come out now. Naruto said and in puff of smoke reveals a man that was wearing a standard Anbu uniform and was wearing a boar mask. The man takes his mask off and reveals his face. The man has black eyes and black hair. This man is Itachi Achiha, who is known as the prodigy of the Achiha clan and the heir of the Achiha clan. Itachi smiled at the blonde and sits beside him. Naruto offered him a piece of his food and Itachi gracefully accepted it and took a bite and smiled appeared on his face. Delicious as always Naruto kun your cooking even beats my mother cooking. Itachi complimented and Naruto just smiled at him and thanked for the compliment. So I heard that you become of my sister teammates. What do you think of the team setup? Itachi asked as he accepts a drink from Naruto. To tell you the truth I'm quite surprised to tell you the truth, but I'm okay with it as long we all willing to help out each other and take our job seriously. Naruto said before he took sip of his drink. Itachi nodded and also took a sip of his drink. Both were quiet for several seconds until Itachi broke it. Naruto-kun I would like to thank you again for saving my sister few years ago. Itachi said and Naruto just nodded at him. Don't mention it Itachi Nyasen beside that's what good heroes do. Saving people who are in need even I'm a shinobi and would start to kill people I still want to be seen as a hero. Naruto said. Itachi was surprised by this but smiled at the blonde. 
Naruto-kun you do know that Kasen is still asking for some your dishes right? Itachi randomly asked. Itachi and her mother was one of the few people that knew Naruto's skill in cooking. Naruto just smirked at him. Sure no problem but in exchange I won't make any homemade Pocky for a month. Naruto said and Itachi eyes widen in horror and turn pale in hearing this. No Pocky for a month made by Naruto-kun is a nightmare. His Pocky is more delicious than being sell in stores. That was a low blow Naruto-kun Itachi half glare at the blonde and Naruto chuckles at him. And you know that I won't give my dishes away that easily if you want some my dishes recipes you need to sacrifice. Naruto said and Itachi pouted at him with Naruto let out few chuckles, then soon Itachi started to chuckle, and then they continued to eat their lunch. After lunch, Naruto returned to the classroom an hour late and slid the door open and saw what was in front of him. The glaring Sakura, Naruko, Satsuki. Ani-chan where were you? Naruko asked while glaring at him. Yeah, how are we going to be a team if you won't join with us? Satsuki asked with Sakura nodding in agreement and all three girls glaring at him. Naruto just sweat drop at this and cleared his throat and tries to explain it carefully. Well the reason that I could join is because of the fangirls will try to get me, and besides, I already promised Itachi Niasen to have lunch with him. Naruto said. He half lied because it was only pure coincidence that he met Itachi there. The girls stare at him for a few minutes until they look at each other and nodded before allowing him to enter the classroom. Naruto taken his seat and the girls were about to talk to him when suddenly a voice interrupted them. Yo. The man said as he entered the room. The man has spiky white hair and his forehead protector was covering his left eye. The man was wearing a standard shinobi uniform. This man is known Kakashi Haddock. Following him was Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas who also wearing a standard shinobi uniform and had her long red hair tied into a ponytail with bangs both sides on her face. Sorry, we are late. We got lost from the road of life. Kakashi said with his signature eye smile only get bonked in the head by Kashina. We're late because of you Kakashi. Kashina scolded and Kakashi just apologized to her and they turned to their attention to Team 7. Anyway Team 7, meet us in the rooftop in 10 minutes. Kashina said then she and Kakashi vanished in puff of smoke. Well we better get going. Naruto said before he vanishes like a ghost leaving her shocked teammates. Few moments later Naruko snapped out of her thoughts and quickly ran towards the rooftop with her other two following her. On the rooftop, Naruko and the girls arrived in the rooftop only see Kashina holding an orange book and Kakashi was on knees begging a Kashina. Please Kashina senpai that's my autograph itcha itcha series. Kakashi pleaded. I don't care damn it Kakashi. I don't want you see reading that book in front of me or my students or else I'll burn this and tell Minato kun not him to allow you to sell any of these smut book. Kashina threatened him and Kakashi turned pale but nodded at her. Kashina gave him his book back and Kakashi hugged the book tightly. Man can we get over with I need to train you know. Naruto said as he appeared out of nowhere that surprised everyone. I didn't sense him Kashina and Kakashi thought. Both senseis snapped out of their thoughts as their student taken their seat. Alright, how about we all introduce ourselves to each other. Tell us your likes, dislikes, hobby and dream. Kakashi said and Naruto was the first one to do it. I'm Naruto Uzumaki Namikas I like training, books, learning new things and swords. Dislikes are traitors, arrogant peoples and people who believe that missions are more important than comrades. My hobbies are training and writing stories and my dream is well that's classified. Naruto said and everyone was surprised in introduction, then face fault at the end of his introduction. Um, Naruto-kun what kind of story do you write? Sakura asked. Naruto put on the thinking pose then few seconds later he grabs something from his pocket and pulls it out and reveals to be a pair of book. Everyone eyes widen in shock in seeing the books. You're the author of Adventures of Arthurian and Fate of Shiru Amiya Sakura asked in shock, and the blonde nodded at her. Naruto was inspired by the two heroes so much that he decided to write a story about them. The Adventures of Arthurian is the story about Saber life and all the adventures and experience she had. The book was started when he was 7 years old and finished the book when he was 12. The Fate of Shiru Amiya is the sequel of The Adventures of Arthurian, the book tells the story on how Shiru life started and how he met Arthurian and how they fought together through the war. Naruto is still continuing the story, but he just didn't have right time to write. The Adventures of Arthurian and Fate of Shiru Amiya were huge hit they sail 50 times better than the Icha Icha series. Suddenly Sakura pulled out her own copy of Adventures of Arthurian that was the first volume of the series. Naruto can I have your autograph? Sakura asked. Maybe later Sakura-chan, but let's continue the introduction first. Naruto said and Sakura pouted but nodded in understanding. Okay moving that aside. Let's continue. Kakashi said. My turn my name is Naruko Uzumaki Namikas I like my family, Ani-chan cooking, this surprised both senseis, Raymond and learning new jutsu. I dislike arrogant fools and perverts, hobbies are to train and try to spend some time with Ani-chan, and Dream is the first female hokage ever. Naruko said with a grin. 
The mini Kashina Kakashi thought well Kashina just chuckle at her daughter's introduction. Your next pinky Kakashi said, and Sakura glares at him. Don't call me that. Sakura shouted, then clears his throat. Anyway I'm Sakura Haruno my likes are Naruto-kun, Naruto smiled at her while Satsuki glares at her, and she hear mumbles from Naruko, friends, my dislikes are perverts, tardiness and people who bullies the weak. My hobby is reading especially Naruto-kun books, Naruto chuckles at this, and my dream is strong Kanoichi. Sakura finished. Alright your turn Satsuki-chan Kishina said. I'm Satsuki Ichiha I like my family, fire jutsu and tomatoes. I don't have any dislikes and my hobbies are training and eating tomatoes. My dream is to become like Itachi Ani-chan and Anbu captain. Satsuki finished and Kakashi gave them an eye smile. Well it's our turn now. I'm Kakashi Haddock I like lot of things, I dislike lot of things, I have many hobbies and my dream I don't feel like tell you about. Kakashi said and Naruto had smirked on his face and decided to burst his bubbles. In short you like those smut books, you dislike anyone saying horrible things to your smuts, your hobbies are reading that smuts and visiting your friend graveyard and your dream is becoming a porn star. Naruto finished everyone look at wide eyes, well Kakashi was twitching every time Naruto called his book smuts, but calms down and regained his posture. Anyway I'm Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas I love my family and children Naruto rolled his eyes in the children part. My likes are Raymond and playing pranks on people. My dislikes are perverts, people who made fun of my hair and anything that's bitter. My hobbies are pulling pranks, chatting with my friends and cooking. As for my dream is to make you all proud nin of the leaf and she glances at Naruto who just look away. I want to complete my family Kashina finished. Kakashi and Naruko knew about this, while Sakura and Satsuki were confused. Anyway I will now explain the final exam. Kakashi said. Naruko, Sakura and Satsuki eyes widen in shock. What test? Sakura asked in shock. Kakashi was about answer, but Naruto beat him at it. The real genin test Sakura-chan. That test that we did in the academy was only to see that we have potential to become a ninja, well the final test will tell that if we are ready for real ninja world. In this test has 66% chance of failing and returns to the academy. Naruto explained, and Kakashi was impressed and nodded at him. He's correct meaning that this test is very hard and there are little for all of you to pass. Kakashi said. Anyway meet us tomorrow at training ground 7 at 6 am sharp. Kashina said. Oh and here's some advice try not to eat, otherwise you'll puke. Kakashi said and Naruto snorted at him. Then the Jounin disappears leaving the students alone. Girls don't take that stupid advice. If listen to him you be sure to fail the test. Naruto said before vanishing again like a ghost leaving his sister and teammates. Chapter 3. Next day, Sakura, Satsuki and Naruko arrived at the training ground 15 minutes early, but made sure to eat breakfast. At exact 6 o'clock Kashina appeared in the twirl of leaves. But you're all in time. Where are Naruto and Kakashi? Kashina asked when a puff of smoke appeared revealing Kakashi. The Okakashi greeted while Kashina looked at him with shock. Kakashi you're actually on time. Kashina said, because sensei threatened that me if I was lady will burn my book. Kakashi said with a sigh while the girl snickered at this. Alright since everyone's here let's get started. A voice said as everyone looked up at the tree and saw Naruto looking at them he, then jumped down and landed in front of everyone. Again he appeared out of nowhere even I didn't sense him a few seconds ago. Kashina thought but quickly snapped out of her thoughts. Alright let's get the test started. Kashina said getting everyone attention. Kakashi. Kakashi nodded at her and revealed three bells in front of them, then set a clock on top of the wooden post. Now the objective of the test is to get the bells from us, before the time limit is over I'll warn you come at us with the intent to killing, her you won't get the bells from us got it. Kashina said and the genins nodded at her. Oh yeah the one who couldn't get a bell will be returned to the academy. Kakashi said making the girl's eyes widen, while Naruto's eyes slightly narrowed. Alright everyone ready? Kashina said and the genins nodded at her. Begin. The genin spread out and hide from the in sight. The girls hid themselves well while well Naruto at the hell. Why can't detect his chakra at all it's like he disappeared Kashina said, and Kakashi looked Kashina expression and knew in what she was thinking. So she noticed that Naruto's chakra is completely gone like it vanished into the thin air. Kakashi thought. Um Kashina senpai how good is Naruto? Kakashi asked and pang of guilt hit Kashina. I don't know me or Minato-kun never trained him. Kashina stated sadly and Kakashi eye widened. With Naruto. Naruto was far away from the training ground and he was in standing in the branch of the tallest tree and was using reinforcement magic to his eyes to see Kashina and Kakashi. Alright our main objective is to use get the bells, but one of us will return to the academy, but I never heard of an incomplete team before, unless bells are just a distraction to keep us from knowing the real meaning of the test, but what is it? Naruto thought then he scanned around and saw the hiding spots of his teammates, but all of them are separated, then his eyes widen in shock and realization. Teamwork. They wanted us to work together to get the bells. 
Naruto thought happily as he solved the true meaning of the test, then did a hand sign. Shadow clone Jutsu Naruto thought then three clones appeared behind him. He looks at his clones and said. You three tell the girls the true meaning of the test and tell them to meet up with me. Naruto whispered and the clones nodded and spread out and has smirk on his face. But Naruko. Naruko was currently hiding in the bushes and was thinking of ways in getting the bells until she felt something on her shoulder. She turns around and saw her brother looking at her. Ani chan Naruko said happily and Naruto shook his head. No I'm only a clone the clone said and Naruko just nodded at him. Why did Ani chan send a clone? Naruko asked. He told me to tell you the true meaning of the test. The clone said and Naruko eyes widened in hearing this and asked what it is. The bells are an only distraction to the real meaning of the test. We need teamwork so we need the others to pass the test. The clone explained and Naruko nodded at them. Follow me so we can meet with boss and the others. The clone said as jump away from the bushes and headed towards the real Naruto with Naruko following him. With Naruto. Naruto was patiently waiting for the girls to arrive then a minute has passed and the girls arrived with his clones. Looks like everyone here. Naruto said then he dispelled the clones. So what's the plan Naruto-kun? Satsuki asked. Yeah Naruto-kun those two won't go easy on us we need to come up with plan to get the bells. Sakura said. Don't worry Sakura-chan I got a plan. Naruto said and everyone leaned over to listen to the plan. Here's what we are going to do with Kishina and Kakashi. Ten minutes has passed and nobody has attacked us yet, maybe they figured out the test. Kakashi stated when suddenly a barrage of kunai attacked them up front and Kishina pulled out a katana, while well, Kakashi pulled his kunai and they deflected the attacks. A surprise attack. Kishina thought when she suddenly sensed another chakra coming towards her, she turns around with her katana ready. Plang. Kishina was surprised to see Naruko attack her with katana in her hand, then suddenly Sakura came out of the bushes and throws a barrage of kunais towards her and Kakashi. The two jounin jump high in the air to avoid it, and Naruko followed Kishina in the air once again, both of them clashes with their katanas. Kakashi was about to help Kishina when he heard a voice. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. A voice shouted and Kakashi looked from where it was coming from and saw Satsuki then Satsuki spit a huge fireball at Kakashi quickly use body replacement jutsu and switch himself with a log. That was a close call, but I got to say they have a good teamwork. Kakashi thought who was hiding in the bushes when he used body replacement jutsu. But before could continue his thoughts he suddenly black out the last thing he saw was a blonde hair before he lost consciousness. Moments later, Kakashi started to wake up and found himself tied up. He tried to use body replacement jutsu to get out of the ropes, but something was blocking his chakra. So you're awake now. A voice said and something walks out from the shadow and reveals to be Naruto. Naruto. Kakashi said in surprised and Naruto just smirked at him. Surprised that you can't use any chakra sensei. Well it was really simple really I just made a seal in the ropes so that anyone who got caught in the ropes won't be able to use any chakra until I release the seal. Naruto explained and Kakashi just looked at him with wide eyes and couldn't help but be amazed at hearing this, then he heard sound of bells and saw that Naruto had one of the bells in his hand. Now I'm gonna make you our hostage in exchange of the bells. Naruto stated. What do you may a Kakashi didn't finish as he was knocked out by Naruto again by a hand chop in back of his neck. With Kishina and the Genins. Kishina was currently fighting the three Genin girls and so far she was impressed by their teamwork. These girls have shown great teamwork so far, but where is Naruto? Kishina thought as she landed on the lake of training grounds, then she immediately snapped out of her thoughts when she saw Satsuki attack her with barrage of fireballs. Kishina immediately made bunch of hand seals. Water style. Wall encampment wall. Kishina shouted and immediately the water rised in front of her and extinguished the fireballs. The three genins were now looking at the red hair woman with calculating eyes. Naruko how much longer? Satsuki asked before Naruko could respond she felt a chakra pulse sent to her. She looks at the small seal in her wrist that Naruto drew to her and saw it glow blue. About now Naruko said then Naruto appeared in front of them and everyone was surprised when they saw Kakashi, who was unconscious, with him. Sorry I'm late everyone. Naruto said then he faced Kishina, then his expression turned cold and pulled out a kunai at the unconscious liver hair down and neck and Kishina was surprised at this. Give me the bell sensei before I slit his throat. Naruto said coldly and that sense shivered to everyone's spine. Kishina looks at Naruto eyes and only saw they didn't held any emotion at all and he doesn't look like that he was bluffing. Kishina stared at him for several seconds before she sighed in defeat and reached for the bells, before she could throw it at him, they heard the alarm ringing. The genins groaned in annoyance while Kishina sighed in relief before looking at them with a grinning face. Looks like it over Kishina said and the genin just a depressed look on their face, except for Naruto, who just sighed in disappointed for not finishing the task in time near the wooden posts. Now Kishina and Kakashi, who just woke up, were facing the four genins. 
Well you all failed to get the bells well except for Naruto of course. Kakashi said. Not exactly Naruto said everyone looks at him confused then they saw he had a smirk on his face. He pulls out three bells and everyone was looks at him shocked especially the two Jounins. Kashina looked at her ninja pouch to find the bells but couldn't find it. How did you? Well you had your guard down when we were heading here I used a shadow clone and hinged them into bells and used replacement jutsu. This was only my backup plan when you are not going to give the bells when I had Kakashi hostage. I already prepared the clones that were changed into bells before I faced you. Naruto stated and everyone could help but to be shocked and amazed at this. Okay since you have the bells Naruto who are going gives the other two. Kakashi asked and Naruto just threw the three bells towards the girls and they managed catch. Everyone was surprised by his actions except for the two Jounins who were observing his actions with calculating eyes. They can have the bell, besides the true meaning of the test is teamwork anyway. The bells were only distractions for us to prevent from seeing what the real meaning of test is. Naruto explained. These right on each chan told us about the test and came up with the plan. I never knew that Kakashi sensei would easily catch off guard. Naruko said, and the female genins giggle, while Kakashi had depressed look on his face. Besides I have another back plan if Kakashi wants me back to the academy. Naruto said and everyone looked at him confused until he pulls out something from his pocket. The girl's eyes widen in shock, while Kakashi had a horror look on his face. In Naruto hand was the Icha Icha book that Kakashi was reading and was a limited edition with autograph signed by Jiraiya himself. I can always burn this as a payback and go to his apartment and burn rest of the books. Naruto explained and Kakashi immediately went on his knees and started to beg Naruto not to burn his book. Please Naruto don't burn it. Kakashi pleaded and bowing his head to the ground which was really pathetic. Naruto thought it was funny and decided to play with him. Hey you said if I didn't have a bell that I would go back to the academy so consider this as a payback beside I'm sure majority of female population will be happy that the book is destroyed anyway. Naruto said as he few hand signs and spit a small fireball towards one of the wooden post and it started to burn. Naruto started to put the book near the burning wooden log. Say bye bye to your book Kakashi. Naruto said. Alright. You passed the test. Now please return my book please. Kakashi pleaded and Naruto looks at Kashina and she nodded at him. Naruto gives back the book and in one swipe Kakashi happily hugged his book and Naruto just shook his head. Well I'm to say that you all pass and I have to say Naruto-kun your planning was brilliant. You told the girls to distract us using their teamwork so that we would completely focus on them until one of us had our guard down and used the one you knock out as a hostage. Kashina said and Naruto just nodded at him. But the more embarrassing part is that Kakashi was easily knocked out by a genin. Naruto added, and all the girls giggle, while Kakashi had depressed look on his face and sending glare at Naruto who completely ignored it. Kashina claps her hand to get everyone attention. Alright everyone I would like to congratulate you all for a job well done. You all were able to retrieve the bells and you used to teamwork to get it. Kashina said. But remember these words those who break the rules are trash, but those you leave their comrades are worse than trash take this words to the heart. Kakashi added and the genins nodded, but they didn't notice that Naruto had a small smile on his face in hearing those words. He liked Kakashi principles and agreed with them. Alright team 7 is now an official team. We are going to start to take missions and begin training now as a leaf genin. That's all. Dismissed. Kashina said, then she and Kakashi disappeared. Naruto sighs and was about to leave the training ground when suddenly Sakura clungs to his arm. How ma Naruto kun let celebrate. Sakura chirped happily. Satsuki and Naruko glared at Sakura and suddenly they also clung into Naruto. Satsuki was around his other arm while Naruko was clinging from behind. You're not going anywhere with Naruto kun. Satsuki shouted and Naruto was surprised at this. Yeah Ani chan is going to celebrate with me. Naruko declared and the three glares at each other and sparks were flying around them while Naruto was crying and I'm tears because of his luck with the women around him and he decided he had enough. A poof of smoke surrounded him and suddenly was replaced with a log. All the girls around him were shock was just transpired, then soon the girls started to blame each other. This is your fault. My fault. Yeah because of you he's gone damn it. I need to find Naruto-kun. Not that I find Ani-chan first. Soon the girls split up and Naruto appears from the bushes and sighs in relief. Women are really troublesome. Naruto said as he headed to small restaurant to eat, a certain Nara sneezed. At the Hokage Tower, Team 1 failed, Team 2 failed, Team 3 failed, Team 4 failed, Team 5 failed, Team 6 failed. Leonardo sighs as he listened to the Jounin reports. Each team failed and he was frustrated he really needs to change the system of the academy. Suddenly the door opened and reveals to be Kashina and Kakashi as they entered the room. Sorry that we're late Minato kun I test had taken longer than I suspected. Kashina said and Minato nodded and sends a smile to Kashina hoping to hear good news. Alright everyone please continue your report. Minato said. 
Team 7 passed with flying colors. Kishina said with grin on her face with Kakashi nodding in agreement. Every Jounin was surprised in hearing this, because usually Kakashi fails every team that was assigned to him, while Minato was happy in hearing some good news. Can you explain to us Kishina-chan? Minato asked happily and Kishina started to detail about the test, and as she continued to explain the test, everyone in the room was surprised on how Naruto's plan worked very well, and also found it very funny that Kakashi who was a rank shinobi, was easily knocked out by a genin which made Kakashi depressed, and finally much to most women happiness, and the horror of the males that Naruto threatened Kakashi to burn the orange book. Well okay thank you Kishina-chan. Minato said and Kishina nodded at him. The mate passed they have good teamwork but needs more work. Kurinai said. Team 10 passed they are like their fathers, but I need to work on Ino though since she a bit of fangirl towards your son Hokage-sama. Asuma explained and Minato nodded in understanding then dismissed the meeting, and the Jonans left leaving only Kashina and Minato. Our son is greater than we thought I never knew that he made a devious plan. Minato said and Kashina nodded in agreement. I hope that I would at least make him opened up to me, at least make him feel that we are family to him. Kishina said and Minato nodded in agreement, and the two parents decided to think of plan to make Naruto feel a part of their family, and ask for his forgiveness. Three months later, three months has passed and Team 7 had been doing missions or the genins call chores, and they hated it, especially capturing the Tora the cat who was the hell cat for every genin ninja of Konoha, except for Naruto for some reason Tor like Naruto. During those months Team 7 was being trained to get stronger. Kishina was training them individually while Kakashi trains them on teamwork and chakra exercises, but Naruto already knows those exercises, so he uses a blood clone to send the clone during team training and meeting, while he train on his own at the Forest of Death. Also while training in the Forest of Death Naruto met Anko again, but the snake woman didn't attack him again, but instead talked to him which made Naruto feel suspicious at first, but in the end the two became friends, and they often sparred and opened up to each other. Naruto was surprised that Anko was being shunned and hated by the village, because she was the former apprentice of the snake Sanin of Konoha, Orochimaru. Naruto also found the cursed seal that was located on her neck, then soon he started to do his research on how to remove. Now Team 7 is standing in front of the Hokage Tower with Tora who was in Naruto's hand and was purring in his touch. Alright catching Tora the cat is complete. Kishina said and Aruka asked Naruto hand Tora over to him, and the blonde complied and gave the cat to Aruka, then Aruka put it back to its cage. Alright now you can choose the following missions. Taking the Inuzuka dogs for a walk, helping an old lady or fixing th. Dusan can you give any better mission we've been doing this for three months. Can we get a better mission Naruka whined and the two genin girls nodded in agreement while the Jounin's just sighs in annoyance and Naruto just completely ignored the situation as he continues to read a book about Fuinjutsu in his hand. Naruko. You've just been a genin for three months and you don't enough experience yet. Naruka shouted and until Minato decided to cut in. Calm down Aruka, how about we let their Jounin instructor decide if they are ready for higher mission. How about Kishina-chan? Are they ready for a higher mission? Minato asked and Kishina nodded at him. I think they are ready, me and Kakashi have been training these kids hard, so I think they deserve a C-rank mission. Kishina stated, and Minato turns his attention to Kakashi. How about you Kakashi what do you think? Minato asked and all he received was a nod from the masked Jounin. Very well Team 7 are going to take a C-rank mission bring in the client. Minato said. Moments later a man who was drunk entered the room. Is this all you got is my bodyguards? A three spoiled princess and a scarecrow. The only decent ones are the lady with red hair and the kid with blonde hair. The man said. Screw you old man your head is mine. Naruko shouted as she was about to attack the old man, but Naruto grabbed her collar from behind to restrain Naruko. Naruko you can't kill the client it's bad for business. Kakashi scolded her and Naruko puffed her cheeks and grumbled some words. But that doesn't mean that you can't kill him after the mission. Naruto just added. The old man turned pale while Naruko frown turned to a sadistic smile. Okay that's enough we'll meet at village within two hours. So pack your things that you'll be all needing for at least three weeks. Kishina said and the genins nodded at her. But dismissed. Kishina said and Naruto was the first one to leave when disappeared like a ghost again. Outside the village gate, Naruto arrived to the lake where he met the Vivian or who was known as the Lady of the Lake. Vivian-sama. Naruto called and moments later Vivian appeared in front of him. Hello Naruto-kun why are you here? It's that I'm complaining or anything. Vivian said. Naruto would visit her once a month, and Naruto was seeing Vivian as his mother like Saber once saw her. Vivian also saw Naruto as her son, and the two would always tell stories to one another. Naruto smiled at her nothing much Vivian-sama, I'm just going to tell you that I'm going for a mission that might take three weeks or more, and wanted to see you first before I go. Naruto said and Vivian smiled at him. Well that's nice of you Naruto, but I believe there is another reason why are you here am I correct? 
Vivian asked and Naruto asked and showed the symbol in his right hand. Can you tell me about the symbol? Naruto asked and Vivian nodded at him. Of course, the sword represents the tracing magic that you learn from Shiruamiya and other offensive magic, the sheath represents the defense magic, and alas the wings represent the greatest magic that you learn from him, and I'm sure that you know that very well Naruto-kun. Vivian said and Naruto nodded at her. He knew what she was taking about the forbidden magic that Shiruamiya taught him. If one of the symbols disappears it means that you've unlocked that power, meaning you can use one of the skills that Shiruamiya thought you. Vivian said and Naruto eyes to widen in hearing this. Vivian Sama, can you remove at least one of the symbols please? Naruto asked. He really wanted to use Shiru magic again and wanted to relearn it. Vivian was surprised at his request. Are you sure Naruto-kun if I remove one of the seals forcefully it will be very painful? Vivian warned him and Naruto was surprised in hearing but nevertheless agreed to it. Vivian sighed because she knew that Naruto was a stubborn person and will do anything to achieve his goals. Very well Naruto-kun, but I did warn you so be prepared. Vivian said as she placed her hand to Naruto's symbol, and soon the sword symbol started to glow, and Naruto started to scream in pain, and his fell down to his knees but was fighting the pain. Several minutes later the symbol of the sword was gone, and Naruto was heavily panting of exhaustion. Vivian started to use some magic for him to regain his energy. Naruto stands up and looked at symbol again, and saw the sword was gone. Naruto closed his eyes and tried to remember the steps that Shiru taught him. Judging the concept of creation, hypothesizing the basic structure, duplicating the composition material, imitating the skill of its making, sympathizing with the experience of its growth, reproducing the accumulated years, excelling every manufacturing process, Grace on Naruto said, and several lines appeared in Naruto right hand, and soon two swords appeared in his hand. One was black and other was white. It was Shiru's signature blades and one of his favorites. Anshu and Bakuya. Naruto opened his eyes and saw the swords and grinned. Looks like I still got it. But I need to practice it to make my sword stronger. Naruto said and Vivian claps her hands and Naruto looks at her. Well Naruto-kun I'm sure that you're very happy, but I can't remove the other two symbols. Vivian said and Naruto looks at her confused. Why? Because if I do it again there's high possibility that you might die, so I'm not gonna take any chances. You have to find out on your own on how to release them. Vivian said and Naruto all he could do was nod at her. Thank you again Vivian-sama for all the things you've done to me. Naruto said as he bowed his head. Don't worry about it Naruto-kun I'm very happy that I can help you. Vivian said and Naruto said his goodbye to the Lady of the Lake before heading back inside the village. Time skip, Naruto was first to arrive at the village. For the past hour he was practicing his tracing magic and other offensive magic that he learned from Shiru, and he was happy that he was still able to get the hang of it. Naruto was leaning of the wall with arms crossed and waited for his team to arrive. Ani-chan. Naruto-kun. Voices called and Naruto looked at his right and saw his entire team walking towards him with Kishina, but Naruto was surprised to see the person with them. It was Makoto Ichiha who was wearing a Jounin uniform and his hair ponytailed like Kishina. Ichiha-sama, why are you joining us? Naruto asked. Even Naruto trust her he doesn't truly trust her completely since she was one of the people who ignored Naruto when he asked her for some shinobi training, since she was his mother best friend after all. Naruto-kun, just call me Makoto. Makoto said with smile on her face. Just answer the question Ichiha-sama. Naruto said with annoyed tone, and everyone was surprised on how he responds to her. Naruto don't answer Makoto-chan like that. Kishina scolded at him, and Naruto just rolled his eyes and crossed his arms. Whatever Naruto said and look around and noticed that Kakashi and the client were missing. Where's Haddock and the old man? Naruto asked and nobody answered him. He let out a sigh and made clone and whispered something to the clone before the clone suddenly vanished. Naruto-kun, what did you told to the clone? Sakura asked. Just wait Naruto said, and few minutes later they heard a girly scream. What the hell is that? Naruko asked and was about to run from where it was coming from when suddenly Naruto stops her by grabbing her shoulder. Naruko turns around and see Naruto was looking at her. Just wait Naruto said, and several seconds later they saw the clone dragging Kakashi and the client towards them. Did you burn the book? Naruto asked and the clone raised an eyebrow at him. You all heard the scream right? The clone asked and everyone nodded at him. It's because I saw these two drinking in the local bar so I did what my boss told me to do, I burned his precious Icha Icha book right in front of Kakashi, and he screamed like girl, then I knocked the two out and dragged their asses here. The clone said before he disappeared in poof of smoke and Naruto received all the clone memory and couldn't help but smirk. Several seconds later Kakashi started to wake up. What happened? Kakashi said as he sat up and looked around and saw he was outside and the team was looking at him, but his eyes landed on Naruto and glared at him. Naruto, why 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 did you burn my book? Kakashi demanded and Naruto just shrugged at him. I don't know I just wanted you to see you miserable since you're not taking our first C-rank mission seriously. You're just lucky that didn't burn your whole collection. 
Naruto said and Kakashi glared at him and resisted the urge to strangle the blonde because Kashina, Makoto and the others girls will kill him if they saw him strangling him, then the old drank started to wake up. What happened? The client asked as he found himself outside the bar and was near the village gate. My son dragged you and Kakashi here to Zuna-san so we can start with the mission. Kashina said and Tazuna nodded at her and stands up. Is everyone here? Kashina asked and everyone nodded at her. Okay let's begin the mission. Kashina said and everyone soon they left the village to begin the mission. Chapter 4 Team 7 with Makoto and Tazuna were heading towards the Land of Wave, where their mission was to escort Tazuna through the Land of Wave, which was classified as a C-rank mission. During their journey Kashina, Makoto and rest of the girls would try to talk to Naruto, but Naruto didn't pay attention to them because of the book about Fuinjutsu he was reading much displeasure of the of the girls, while Kakashi was doing the same reading his Icha Icha book, and finally Tazuna, who kept bragging about how awesome he was much annoyance to everyone. So far the journey was normal until everyone was able to see Puddle in the road. In Jutsu everyone thought and Naruto secretly prepared a kunai in his sleeve. They passed through the pond when suddenly chains appeared out of nowhere, and Naruto reacted quickly and threw his hidden kunai and hit the chains, stabbing it to the tree. Something pulled out from the puddle and was revealed to be two missing nins. Kashina and Makoto were about to charge at the two missing nins, when suddenly Naruto passed through them, and he quickly did a hand sign. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto shouted before two clones appeared besides him the two clones pulled out ninja wires from their pouches and quickly surrounded the missing nins with the wires before delivering a blow to them, sending them flying to the tree, then the clones circle around the tree once and then pull the wires and tighten the wires to make sure the missing won't be able to move. The missing nins were about to try to escape the wires when suddenly they felt something on their throat. They look up and saw Naruto was looking at them with a cold glare and has kunai near their throat. Who sent you? Naruto asked in cold tone. Like hell we'll tell you. One of the masked nins said and a smile appeared on Naruto's face that made the masked nins creep out. You're gonna regret those words. Naruto said before he ordered something to the clones and knocked the two missing nins out before dragging them to deeper parts of the woods. Naruto. Kashina called and Naruto turns around and saw everyone was running towards him. On each hand, where are clones taking them? Naruko asked and before Naruto could answer they heard a scream. Aya. The scream was so loud that it could be heard through the entire forest. I told my clone to interrogate the missing nins. I should really thank Anko Nichin for those lessons. Naruto said, and every Kanoha Jounin turned pale in hearing this. They knew Anko's reputation as a sadist and if Naruto was learning under her. He might become a sadistic person. Suddenly Naruto's eyes widened for a second before he closed for a moment before opening them. My clones are done interrogating the missing nins. Naruto said. What do you get out of them? Kakashi asked and Naruto started to talk. Those two were the demon brothers who were Chunin level missing nins, and both of them were hired by Gato. Naruto said and everyone started look at him surprised, then turned their attention to Tazuna who was now sweating bullets. Is there something that you're not telling us old man? Naruko asked as her eyes narrowed. I I don't know what are you talking Tazuna said as he looks away. Just tell us what are you up to old man, why didn't you tell us there are also ninja targeting you? This mission is at least BA rank mission Satsuki said angrily. Tazuna just didn't answer her. If you're not going to answer us then I'm calling off this mission. Kashina said and Tazuna looked at him with wide eyes. WW wait please. Tazuna pleaded. Then you better tell us now. Sakura demanded and Tazuna sighs and started about how poor his country has become because of tyrant named Gato, and the bridge was the only hope for them. After finishing his story Makoto looks at her best friend and said. Kashina I think it's best we return home. This mission might be too much for our children, Kashina nodded and was about to give her order when suddenly Naruto cut in. I think that's a stupid decision at Chihasama. Naruto said and everyone looked at him. What do you mean by that Naruto-kun? Makoto asked and Naruto sighed from them not seeing the obvious thing. We have an A-rank shinobi, an S-rank shinobi and SS-rank shinobi who is par with my father, and you're telling us that we should return home? Naruto asked clearly annoyed by a Chiha matriarch decision. But Naruto, you and rest of the girls are only genins for three months, and clearly all of you are not experienced enough. Kakashi said and suddenly felt a shark near his neck and saw Naruto was holding a kunai at him. Everyone was surprised by his actions and especially Kakashi after seeing Naruto cold eyes. Don't talk me like that haddock, like you know me. You don't really know since most of everyone in the family and their friends ignored me in the past. Naruto said, and the adults with Naruko flinched in hearing this, while Satsuki and Sakura looked confused, clearly they didn't know Naruto was talking about. Now, now Naruto calm down. Kakashi said as he tried to calm Naruto down, but Naruto just looked at him with emotionless eyes. Try to talk to me like that again Haddock, and I will take something that made you a man. Naruto said emotionlessly and Naruto pointed his kunai near his crotch, and Kakashi rapidly nodded his head. 
He was scared a threat that Naruto made. Naruto put his kunai away much relive of the mask nin and Naruto look at Kishina with arms crossed. So are you really going to abandon this mission sensei? Naruto asked and Kishina was hesitant for a second but nodded at him. I'm sorry Naruto, but this mission might too much for all of you. There might some situation that you might need to kill someone and all of you are still too young for that experience. Kishina said. Don't worry I kill a lot of creatures in forest of death all the time when I train there and I'm not afraid to take another being life. Naruto said and everyone looked at him with shock hearing that he already killed a living being and going to the forest of death. What you didn't tell that me or your father that you were training there. What would happen if you get killed? Kishina screamed at his son and Naruto narrowed his eyes at her. Let's go one thing straight Kishina. Naruto said very cold tone and everyone shiver at this especially Kishina and Naruko, they never heard this kind of tone from Naruto before. You, Minato or any of your friends or in the village didn't help me to become a ninja. I trained my ass off so I could be strong shinobi without any help. You and the people of Konoha have nothing to do with my training. I trained on my own. Itachi Niasen and Anko Nichin are the only ones who helped me train. They are the only adults that I can trust the most in Konoha. So don't judge me on what I do because you are any adults in Konoha aside from Itachi Niasen and Anko Nichin. Don't know me at all. Naruto stated releasing all the anger that was hidden in heart since he was a kid. Itachi and Anko are the only adults that Naruto considered a true friend and family, while every adult in Konoha is nothing to him. But the reason that he didn't complain about not being trained since he was a kid because of Saber and Shiru training about learning to hide away his emotions and Naruto was glad that he received that training because it helped him to calm down and if wasn't for that training he would have snapped a long time ago. Everyone was looking at Naruto with wide eyes by outburst and all the adults couldn't help but be feels ashamed and couldn't deny the fact that Naruto was right. Naruko was also feeling ashamed because she knew that she was the reason that most of the adults ignored him. Satsuki and Sakura were completely shocked hearing this and couldn't help but feel sorry for Naruto. Naruto let out a sigh and looked at them. A Konoha shinobi don't back down from mission and if we abandon Tazuna-san we are leaving a dying country to a madman and I will not ignore this. Naruto said as he started to walk ahead but moments later he stops and looked back at them. Those who broke the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades or people in need are lower than trash. I refuse to be lower than trash, so I'm continuing this mission, even I'm going to become a missing nin for the sake of people in the land of wave. Naruto said and everyone looked at him with wide eyes, and Tazuna started to feel great hope that Naruto was willing to continue the mission even he lied to them. Tazuna started to follow Naruto then Sakura looked at Kishina. Sensei, what are we going to do? Sakura asked and Kishina let out a sigh and looked at Makoto and Kakashi, then three adults nodded at each other. We are going to continue this mission like Naruto said, those who broke the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades or people in need are lower than trash. And he's right it would only be a great disgrace to us and the village if we back down now, and this might be the only way for us to make it up to him. Kishina said then soon everyone was headed to the land of wave and continue with the mission. Three days later, when the Kanohan inns got to the coast they found that a thick fog had rolled in. Tazuna led them them to a man that offered them to passage to the other side. Currently they are on the motorboat heading towards the land of waves. Naruto was scanning around the area and was using reinforcement magic to his eyes to help him see more clearly through the fog. Soon the fog started to clear a little and everyone was able to spot the bridge that Tazuna was building. I have to admit that is one impressive bridge. Makoto said as she saw the bridge. Thank you and that bridge will be our hope for the survival of the people of the wave. Tazuna said with pride in his voice. You guys keep it down the man hissed. The whole point of the morning fog was for us not be spotted so be quiet. Soon they landed on the other side and soon walk on foot heading to Tazuna house. As they continued to make their way through the forest Naruto suddenly heard something to the bushes and immediately throws a kunai which caught everyone attention. Is there something wrong on each an? Naruko asked. After reinforcing his eyes Naruto saw white hair that was hiding in the bushes but something was wrong with the hair. Why does hair have white skin? It's summer unless Kawarimi. Everyone put your guards up I have bad feeling that something is going to happen. Naruto said and suddenly Kishina started to hear something. Everybody get down. Kishina shouted and everyone ducked while Naruto tackled Tazuna to the ground. Everyone looks up and saw large Zambatu stuck in a tree with a man standing on top of it. The man was shirtless with two cameo style armbands and pants. His face was half covered with bandages up to his nose and his headband was tilted slightly like Kakashi, except his eyes weren't covered and has the symbol of Kiri displayed on the headband with slash mark on the center. Well, well if it isn't Kakashi Haddock the copy nin, Mikoto Ichiha, the Black Crow of Konoha and the famous Crimson Death Kishina Yuzumaki Namikas, who is par with her husband. No wonder that demon brothers failed the man said. Kakashi was the first one to stand up and glared at the man. Zabuza Momoichi, the demon of the mist. 
I would never think that someone like you would work for scum like Gato. Tabuza just shrugged. Doesn't matter as long as I get pay, now how about you hand over the old man and I let you all go. You really are stupid, are you Zabuza? Kashina said as she pulls out her katana. You think that you can beat all of us, then you're asking for your death wish. Kashina went to her stance, and so did the other Jounins. Wait you're Zabuza Momoichi, you used to be one of Kiri Seven Swordsmen right? Naruto suddenly asked and everyone was looking at him like he was crazy. Well I was former member, but what does it have to do with it? Zabuza asked. I can sense your Ken Kai and I want to fight you against your blade. Naruto said. Kashina and Zabuza was surprised that Amir Genin was able to sense Ken Kai, because only high class swordsmen can sense Ken Kai. Naruto, stand down you stand a Chan Makoto was suddenly cut off by Zabuza. Hold on to my new Chiha, kid, are you telling me that you can sense my Ken Kai? Zabuza asked and Naruto nodded at him, and Zabuza was grinning under the mask. A genin that could sense a Ken Kai this could be fun. So, are you accepting my challenge? Naruto asked. Well, who am I to deny an upcoming Kenjutsu user to prove his sword? Zabuza said then he jumps down and grabbed his Zanbatu and went to his stance. Naruto materialized Kanshu and Bakuya in his hands and also went to his stance. Everyone no one will interfere with fight. Naruto said and everyone eyes widened. Naruto you can't be serious you'll die. Kishina said concerned and worried tone and Naruto looked back at her. If you really sorry in what you did to me then you or anyone won't interrupt with my fight. Naruto said. Kishina was taken aback by his words and decided to respect his decision. Ready kid? Zabuza asked and Naruto nodded at him. Everyone was quiet and both fighters were waiting for one of them to strike first. Zabuza charges at Naruto with Zanbatu ready while Naruto leaps to the air and held his sword high above his head, was falling towards Zabuza. Plang. Both weapons clashes and Naruto decided to jump away from Zabuza, but Zabuza suddenly appeared in front of him. Plang. Zabuza swings his Zanbatu, but Naruto was able to block it with swords, but suddenly his sword shattered to pieces that made everyone eyes widen in horror except for Zabuza. Shit. Naruto thought before he twist his body to barely avoid from gaining a scratch by the Zanbatu. Naruto immediately back away from Zabuza to gain some distances. Is that all you got kid? Zabuza asked and Naruto narrowed his at him. Gray saw Naruto said before Kanshu and Bakuya reappeared again before he charges at Zabuza again to clash with his swords. On the sidelines everyone couldn't believe that Naruto was able stand against Zabuza, the Genins were looking in awe on how Naruto was able to keep up with Zabuza, but the Jounin were getting worried. Wow Naruto-kun is so cool. Sakura said happily and the two Genins girls agreed to her then Naruko looked at her mother and noticed worried look on Kishina face. Ha-chan, what's wrong? Naruko asked and Kishina bit her thumb as she continues to watch the fight. I'm worried about your brother, Naruko. Kishina stated and she looks at her confused. Why? Look at fight closely. Kishina said and Naruko looked back at fight carefully and noticed that Naruto was panting. Suddenly Naruto's sword shattered to pieces again by clashing with Zabuza's Anbatu. Naruto immediately summoned the same swords and blocked Zabuza attack again, but his sword shattered again by the impact of the Zanbatu. Ah. Naruto screamed in pain as he was slashed by the Zanbatu to the chest. Naruto Kanani Chan. Everyone shouted worried tone and was about to rush to help him. Oh this is my fight nobody interrupts it. Naruto shouted and as he dodged attack from Zabuza. Naruto, damn it you'll die if this continues. Kakashi shouted as Naruto dodges a swing from Zabuza's Zanbatu with backflip. Naruto landed safely and was breathing heavily as he touched the wound on his chest. Zabuza charges at Naruto again and Naruto immediately summoned his twin swords again and held in defensive position. Zabuza appeared in front of him and swings his Zanbatu horizontally, and Naruto immediately blocks it with his swords and push it away along with Zabuza to gain some distance. Naruto was breathing heavily and Zabuza looked at him, then points his Zanbatu to Naruto. You're good kid, I want to know your name. Zabuza said. He was very impressed on how Naruto was able to keep up with him, and he was only a genin, but his skill as Kenjutsu user is at least an Anbu level. Naruto had small smile on his face as he continues to breathe heavily. Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki Namek is the saber of Konoha. Naruto stated with a proud voice, and Zabuza grinned at him after hearing his name. Saber ha. Huh? That's a very fitting name for you. Tell me did your mother teach you to fight like that? Zabuza asked in curiosity he never saw that kind style before, and the kid was able to produce the sword out nowhere, and he didn't sense any chakra. Naruto scowled at hearing his mother teaching him and shook his head that made Zabuza look at him surprised. I was never taught by her or anyone in the village I learned from someone else who I considered as a brother and sisters and my idols. Naruto said. On the sideline Kashina frowned in hearing this and lowered her head in shame. She never taught Naruto how to use a sword, and here now she is witnessing that Naruto was at least Anbu level in Kenjutsu, and she didn't even know it. 
while others were also saddened because they can't they the fact that they ignored Naruto before even he just asked small from them they would just pushed him away. That's a shame kid, but I got to say I'm really impressed if you were born in Kiri, I would have taken you as my apprentice. You have talent kid but too bad this is the end of the road for you. Zabuza said and made a tiger sign. Hidden in the mist jutsu. Zabuza said and soon mist started to get thick and soon it started cover the whole area. Naruto reinforced his eyes and tried to locate Zabuza. They're no use kid with this mist you can't find me. Zabuza voice echoed and Naruto started to look around. Naruto. Naruto heard his mother voice calling her when suddenly he slashed in the back. Naruto let out a scream as he drops to his knees. Soon multiple cuts keep appearing in his body and soon his body was covered with cuts and wounds. I told you kid, it's over and you're done. Zabuza voice echoed and Naruto eyes was breathing heavily and made extends his hand in front of him. Not yet. I refuse to die. Naruto thought then he shouted. Wind style. Great breakthrough. The powerful gust came out from Naruto palm and blows away the mist, and Zabuza was also sent flying towards the trees. As soon as the mist was completely clear everyone could see the fight again, and they were horrified when they saw Naruto. Naruto come on each and. Everyone shouted and was about to run towards him. Don't come close to me the fight is not over. Naruto shouted, but everyone stopped from their track by Naruto commanding voice. But Naruto Kusatsuki was cut off when Naruto glared at everybody, then his eyes softened. Please, I want to do this if you all truly want me to start trusting you all, then you will listen to my wish. Naruto said softly and Kashina eyes widened when she heard this. His voice was almost like he was pleading them not to join him or at least heal his wounds. As a mother she would ignore this and help Naruto, but she also wanted to earn Naruto trust. So she having a hard time to decide but in the end she made her decision. Everyone nobody will interrupt the fight that's in order. Kashina said and everyone look at him with wide eyes. But Kashina look at your son he's heavily wounded. Mikoto said. She could believe that her best friend decided not help his son. Kashina turns her attention Mikoto and said. I trust him I know that he can win this. Kashina said and she looks back at her son and nodded at him. Naruto sends her grateful smile and looks back to Buza who recovered from the sudden wind attack that Naruto did and slowly stands up ignoring the pain in his body. Kid, just give up or else you'll die. Zabuza said as he pointed his Zambatu at him and Naruto just smirked at him. Suddenly Naruto started glow gold that made everyone eyes widen in shock, then soon his wounds started to heal, and moments later the glow was gone, and Naruto wounds are completely healed, and everyone could help but shock and amazed at this. You really something Zabuza-san, now I'm gonna fight you with my true blade Naruto said. Everyone was completely confused at this then suddenly strong flash of light happened that causes everyone to cover their eyes. When the light was gone they opened they opened their eyes and see a sword with a golden handle and a sheath in gold and blue. W W what this? Kashina said in shock and nobody answered her because they also was too shocked in seeing this. Naruto grabbed the handle of the sword and pulls it out from the sheath and then it turns into a small ball of light and flew into him and the sword suddenly turned invisible. Then Naruto held the sword behind him and soon the wind started to surround it. Zabuza get ready here I come. Naruto let out a war cry as he charges like bullet towards Zabuza and Zabuza snapped out from his shock and immediately went to defense and blocked Naruto invisible blade. Then the two continued to fight with their blades as sound metals were heard. Azuna and Shinobi nins were to looking awe as Naruto was battling Zabuza aggressively as they continued to exchange blows with their blades. Where did Ani-chan get that weapon? Naruko asked as she watches her brother fight. I don't know but something tells me that your brother has a lot of explaining to do. Kashina said. Zabuza swung his Zanbatu again, but Naruto was able to dodge it by leaping away from him, and Naruto leapt to the air and brought his sword down like a hammer towards Zabuza, and Zabuza attempted to block it with Zanbatu. When the contact was made Naruto said two words. Prana burst and a flash of golden light happened, and the Zanbatu was shattered into pieces, leaving only one third of the blades. Everyone was surprised at this and awe, while Zabuza was shocked and angry in what happened to his blade. Naruto took the chance of distraction of Zabuza and delivered a roundhouse kick, sending Zabuza crashing into several trees. Zabuza groaned in pain and felt something on his neck. He looks down and saw Naruto was holding a kunai near his neck. HH how? Zabuza said in shock. It's been a good fight Zabuza-san, but this is your end. Naruto said before Zabuza could talk suddenly a pair of senbin pierced the man's neck. As Zabuza eyes rolled up in the back of his head as he was about to fall to ground, but Naruto is able to catch his body. Naruto placed his body gently to the ground. Naruto. Naruto turned his head and saw Kashina and the others were running towards him. I would like to thank you for stalling him for me. I have been after Zabuza Momoichi for a long time. Everyone looks up and saw a young person wearing a mask that was wearing a blue robes that covered his or her form. Your hunter nin from Kiri. 
Kakashi asked, and the nin nodded at him, then jumps down from the tree and grabs Ibuza's body by pulling the man's arm to his or her shoulder. I bid you all farewell. The hunter nin said before he or she disappeared in swirl of water. Naruto suddenly collapsed to the ground. Naruto Kanani chan. Everyone shouted as they ran towards Naruto. Kashina checked on his condition and sighs in relief. Don't worry he just exhausted that's all. Kashina said and everyone also sighed in relief, then Kashina carried Naruto in a piggyback ride. Azuna-san, can you lead us to your house so my son can rest? Kashina said an old man nodded at him. Sure it only few meters away. Tazuna said and soon everyone was walking towards Tazuna house. Chapter 5, Where Am I? Naruto asked himself as he found himself in a green plain field. He looks around and only saw the green plain and the blue sky. He looks confused and asking himself. Where am I? And why am I here? He snapped out from his thoughts when suddenly a flash of light happened that made Naruto look away. When the light was gone, Naruto looks back and saw that completely surprised him. It was a hooded figure, and the face was completely covered with darkness, making it hard to identify him, and Naruto noticed that it has a big scythe on its right hand. Hello, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, the successor of his Arthuria Pendragon and Shiramiya. The figure said and Naruto narrowed his eyes at him and quickly created his signature blades. Who are you and how do you know me? Naruto demanded as he went to his stance. The figure just let out a chuckle. Easy there little one, I'm not here to do any nasty thing to you. So just lower your weapon and let's talk like civilized people. The figure said with a calm tone. Naruto glares at the figure for several seconds, and he could feel this figure aura and power, and clearly knew that he was no match for this one. He let out a sigh and made the blades disappear and sits on the ground. The figure did the same, and Naruto just looks at him with curiosity. Okay, who are you and can you tell me where are we? Naruto asked and the figure just nodded at him. Well little one, my name is Oblivion, and primordial god of nothingness, darkness, death and destiny. Oblivion said and Naruto eyes widened in shock, and this made the figure chuckle at the expression on the blonde face. You're shitting aren't you? Naruto said, obviously not believing this figure. Oblivion let out a small chuckle again and released a small amount of his power, and this causes Naruto started breathing heavily. He looks at Oblivion with fear in his eyes and saw Oblivion eyes, and they were blue flames. This guy really is Oblivion. Naruto thought, he was scared thinking that he just pissed off a god. He quickly bowed his head, hoping that the god would not kill him. I'm sorry Oblivion-sama, I, I I didn't know you're actually here. Naruto said and the power disappeared which made Naruto sighs in relief. He looks back again at Oblivion and saw the god's face. Oblivion had a handsome face that would make any woman faint from his looks. He had long silver hair and he had gray eyes, but Naruto could clearly see the blue flames in the center of the eyes. Don't sweat about kid and don't be so formal with me. I hate formalities. Oblivion said and Naruto was surprised at this. He saw the lazy smile on Oblivion face and started to think that this god has a laid-back attitude. Why are you so relaxed? Naruto asked with curiosity. Oblivion just looks at him with a lazy smile. Because I finally have a chance to have a chance to relax. I have too much paperwork you know. Oblivion said, and this causes Naruto to confirm his suspicion and sweat drop at the primordial god words. Okay, that was unsuspected response. Naruto said and Oblivion just chuckled at him. Well, anyway kid. We are in your mindscape. Oblivion said and Naruto once again looks around before returning back his attention to Oblivion. Naruto, I have an offer for you. And what is it? Naruto asked with his arms crossed as he looks at Oblivion. I want you to become my champion. Oblivion said, and this hit Naruto like a ton of bricks. He looks at Oblivion with shock eyes. Thinking that the god was just playing tricks on him, but he saw the serious look on Oblivion. One thing came to the young hero minds. Why? Why would you choose me? Naruto asked and Oblivion just smiled at him. I'm glad you asked lad. Now I'm gonna tell you why. Oblivion said with a happy tone which made Naruto confuse. Naruto, I know that you know about the prophecy about you saving the shinobi world right? Naruto nodded at him. Good, then I won't have to explain you about that crap. Oblivion said and Naruto again sweat drop at hearing this. Anyway that's a part of the reason that I choose you because you are the child of prophecy, but there's another reason. Oblivion said. And what is it? Naruto asked. It's because, your soul is special. Oblivion said, and this made Naruto completely confused. What? Let me explain. Your soul is different from all the others. Your soul can hold great amount of power that could easily surpass all the other heroes. Your soul is very powerful that many of the gods wanted to take you as their champion or goddesses want to make you their husband. Oblivion said before he closes his eyes for a few seconds and opens them again. And you have a soul that would either allow the prophecy wanted to happen or defy it. In short you can stand against fate itself. You are a wild card that would make you very unpredictable. Oblivion finished and Naruto was completely surprised at this. And you're the first god to ever visit me. 
Does the other gods know this? Naruto asked and Oblivion shook his head, and this surprised a blonde. Nope, a vision came to me and I immediately went to your mindscape, and here I am, offering you to become my champion. Oblivion said, and Naruto was dumbfounded at Oblivion words. So, are you going to become my champion? If you become my champion, I will give you the power to create black holes, power erasure and pair of special eyes that will help you fight your enemies. Oblivion said to Naruto and hoping that blonde will accept his offer to become his champion. It sounded like your powers are related to death. Naruto said and Oblivion just chuckled at him. Well of course, death is one of my sons after all will only son. Most of my kids are girls. Of course I have a power over death. Oblivion said with a grin and Naruto just sweat drop at him. Then Oblivion turned serious again. So what is your answer? Before I give you my answer tell me one thing. Naruto said before he looks at Oblivion with serious look on his face. Are you good, neutral or evil? I want to know what kind of god are you? Oblivion was surprised at Naruto question before he closes his eyes and remains silent. Naruto looks at death with a critical eye and observes Oblivion. After few minutes has passed Oblivion opens his eyes and looks at Naruto with a serious look on his face also. Neutral good. I could care less about what happened in the mortal world, but one of the things I hate are beings who considered themselves gods and saying that they are immune to death or fading. Everyone has a beginning and an end even the gods. So you could trust me that I won't let you do anything that is against your code unless it's really needed. Oblivion stated with a serious tone, and Naruto looks at him as tries to pick up any lies, but found only that Oblivion was being truthful to him. Naruto nodded at him and stands up and gave him a smile. Alright, I accept. I will be your champion Oblivion-sama. Oblivion has a grin on his face as he heard as the blonde accepted to be his champion. Excellent. Now I will now give you my blessing. Oblivion held his side the air, and suddenly a circle with crown symbol appear beneath Naruto, then Naruto was struck by black beam from the sky. After it was done, Naruto suddenly fell tired and fell to his knees. He looks at Oblivion. Why did I feel so tired? Naruto asked. Sorry, I forget to tell you about that part. Once you received my blessings. You will feel tired from receiving it. Even we are in the mindscape. You are mentally tired from receiving it. Oblivion said. Okay, that's fine, Naruto said as he panted. Oh, I almost forgot. Look at your right arm. Oblivion said. Naruto lift up his sleeve and saw a dark crown symbol. That symbol is a proof that you are my champion and try to touch it once you are back to your world. Once you make contact with the symbol, it will give you the memories how to use the gifts I gave you, and you can use it to communicate me, but it will only work on night time. Got it. Oblivion said and Naruto nodded at him. Good, now time for you to wake up. Oblivion said before Naruto vision turns dark and fell asleep again. Naruto eyes started to open and found himself in small room. He sat up and looks around then the door opened and reveals to young beautiful woman. Hello there, it seems that you have awakened. The woman said. Um, who are you? Naruto asked. I'm Tsunami, I'm the daughter of Tazuna who is your client. I would like to thank you for saving my father. Tsunami said as she bowed her head and Naruto nodded it smiled at her. Don't worry about it. I'm just doing my job ma'am. Naruto said as he stands up. If you're looking teammates and family they are downstairs. Tsunami said. Naruto just nodded at her and headed downstairs. When he arrived a red blur suddenly tackles him that sends him to the ground. Naruto groaned in pain and looked up to see Naruko grinning at him. You're awake, Ani-chan. Naruko said happily and Naruto just smiled at her sister. Naruto-kun. Naruto looked at sight and saw everyone was surrounding him. Naruko, get off your brother. Kishina ordered and Naruko pouted by complied to her mother command and got off of Naruto. Naruto just stands up and started dusting himself. Naruto looks at everyone and saw they all had serious look on their face. Naruto just sighs because he knew that want to know how he was able to do those things. I guessing that you all want to know on how was able to do those back when I was fighting Zabuza-ha. Naruto asked and everyone nodded at him. You all might want to sit down because this will be a long story. Soon everyone was gathered around the table and was looking at Naruto with calculative eyes, and all he could do was sigh. Naruto, how are you able to do those things? Makoto asked. I'll only going to explain this to all of you, it's because no one interfere with my fight, but that doesn't mean that I trust all of you, got it? Naruto said with strict tone that was non-negotiable. Everyone was sad in that Naruto doesn't trust them, but nodded in agreement to listen to his story. It happened when I was five years old when I was wandering around the village. But everyone was ignoring me. Everyone was saddened in hearing this. I decided to go outside the village. Everyone eyes widened in shock in hearing this, and Kishina was about scold him again when she was cut off by the glare that Naruto was giving her. She decided to keep her mouth shut as Naruto continues. I wandered around the woods for several minutes until I found a small cave that was within the woods. I got curious and decided to go inside. When I reached the end of the cave I found a sheath there. Naruto said. 
Wait, is that the sheath that suddenly appeared when you fight Zabuza? Sakura asked and Naruto nodded at her. Yes, as I was saying I found the sheath in the cave and touch it, and suddenly a powerful light happened that blinded me, then next moment I found myself in a grassy plain. I was wondering on how I will get back when suddenly I heard a voice. A voice that belongs to one of my very precious people. Naruto said as he let out a happy sigh as he remembers those two precious people to him. Who were are those people Naruto-kun? Satsuki asked with a curious tone that made Naruto snap out of his thoughts and look back at them. All of you know that I wrote the book about the two main characters named Arthuria Pendragon and Shiru Amiya. Naruto asked and everyone nodded at him. But what those two have to do with this? Kakashi asked. Those two people are real they were the one who trained me. Naruto stated and everyone looked at him with wide eyes and mouth agape. Those two were real and trained Naruto. This was too hard to believe, and Kakashi was the first one to break out of his shock. Naruto, that's completely impossible you're telling us that you were trained by two fictional characters of your book. Naruto, maybe you were imagining things besides you were a kid back then, so it bound to happen, since kids mostly have great imagination. Kakashi stated, and everyone nodded in agreement to him since it was very logical answer. Naruto just narrowed his eyes at him. If I was really telling a lie then I will tell you one thing that I'm telling the truth. Naruto said. And what's that Naruto-kun? Makoto asked and Naruto resists the urge to glare at the woman, since she doesn't have the right to call him that. Tell me, does everyone know about the Kaiubi? Naruto asked and everyone nodded at him since it was common knowledge to the village. Yes, you and Naruko have the Kaiubi inside both of you. Naruko have the chakra of the Kaiubi while you have the soul of it. Sakura answered then Naruto looks his sister, and she started to look at him with confused look on her face. Naruka did you ever contact with the Kaiubi yet? Naruto asked and Naruko eyes widened in surprised while everyone looked at him confused. What do you mean Naruto? You have the soul of the Kaiubi inside of you, so there's no way that your sister is able to contact with it. Kishina stated, but Naruto ignored Kishina and continued to look at Naruko, and Naruko started to sweat a bit from Naruto gaze. Naruko, please just answer the question. Naruto said with a neutral tone and Kishina had enough of this. Naruto, it's clearly that Naruko never made contact with the Kaiubi, so stop this nonsense. I'm sure that you were. Yes, Naruko said, and everyone looked at her. Yes, I was able to talk to the Kaiubi once when I was eight. Naruko said. That revelation shocks everyone except for Naruto. HH how? That's not possible unless that Kishina didn't finish her sentence when Naruto suddenly cuts in. Like I said the Kaiubi is sealed inside Naruko along with its chakra. If you still don't believe me then here is my proof. Naruto said then he lifted his shirt revealing his stomach. Rest of Genin blushed in seeing Naruto body. Even he was 13 years old his body was very well made. Kishina eyes widened in shock when she that there was not sealing on his stomach. How it's that possible? I know there was a sealing right there. Kishina said in shock. She could believe that she was seeing. She thought that Naruto was lying to her, but seeing the seal was gone she just couldn't believe it. Like I said before the fox is gone and was sealed to Naruko. I don't know how it was sealed to Naruko, but all I know that the Kaiubi soul is sealed inside her along the chakra making the Kaiubi complete. Naruto stated and everyone was shocked in hearing this. Naruto sighs then turn his attention to Kishina with glare. Now answer me this question, why did you or everyone in the village neglect me in favor of Naruko? Is it because of the Kaiubi or because she has more potential than I have? And why are all you and rest of the adults suddenly have interest in me? Naruto demanded and Kishina and rest of the Konoha adults bowed their heads in shame and didn't answer him. Naruto let out a disappointed sigh and stand up from his seat. I rest my case I won't demand any answer from any of you, but know this. Naruto glares at adults and said. I won't respect any of you and don't suspect to answer any more of your questions. You're all an immature adults who likes to play favorites and always think that you're all always right. How foolish. If you need me I'll be out cooling off. Naruto said before he walks away from the house leaving guilty Konoha adults and three shock genins. But Naruto. Naruto was in the forest, resting on the branch of the tree as he looks at the sky. Was all of that a dream? Naruto thought as he remembers his conversation with Oblivion, then suddenly he remembers the primordial god blessing. He lifts up his right sleeve, and his eyes widen in shock in what he saw. The black crown sign. The symbol of Oblivion is his champion. Does that mean that all of that was real Naruto thought as he was confused in what was going on? He just decided to follow Oblivion advice and touch the symbol. Suddenly memories started flashing in his brain, causing him to close and clutch his head in pain, as the visions was entering his brain. He wanted to scream, but he knew that the others will come rushing towards him. He bit his lip as he resists the urge to scream in pain and bear the painful process that was happening to him. After a full 10 minutes Naruto finally passed out from the massive headache he just received, but thankfully he was a good position for him not to fall. Night time, Naruto finally wakes up and feel a massive headache. 
Damn that really hurt Naruto said as he slowly was recovering from the massive headache. What he doesn't realize that his eyes were changing in multiple colors. Hey, what are you doing tonight? A voice said and Naruto looks to where that was coming from and saw two thugs with swords around their waist. Maybe, get some drinks and steal some money from the people in the town. A man said grinned and Naruto narrowed his eyes as he heard this. Yeah, good idea it's not like they can do anything. The two thugs roar laughter and Naruto glares at them and his eyes were shining brightly. Then Naruto saw something that surprises him. Why the hell am I seeing lions? Naruto thought as he saw lions in his surroundings. He pulls out a kunai and used as a mirror and he saw that his eyes were multicolored. What the hell is this Naruto thought then he remembers what Oblivion told him. He touched the mark on his right arm. Oblivion Sama, can you hear me? Naruto thought, but he never heard anything until he heard Oblivion voice. What is a kid? Oblivion voice was heard and this causes Naruto to quickly ask his question. Oblivion Sama, why is my eyes changing to multiple colors and why am I seeing lines? Naruto asked Oblivion. Well kid, you just activated your powerful eyes. It's called mystic eyes of death perception. Oblivion said. What? Naruto asked and was still confused. They are an extremely overpowered supernatural ability that allows the user to kill anything in existence. Those lines and points you see are the death lines or points. Once you trace one of those lines then the object or person will break down. It would be impossible to heal at any other normal circumstances. Well the points are known as the erasers or death of those existence, once you hit one of those points then that person will fade into existence. It can even kill immortals, but it will be a lot harder to see their death points. Anyway those eyes usually have major side effects, but for you being my champion. I removed those effects so you can use however you wish. Go ahead test them. Oblivion said and Naruto was completely surprised at this and looks back at enemies who are still continuing to laugh. So, basically I can see death. Naruto asked. No, the eyes don't let you see death but perceive death. In short understanding death. Oblivion said and Naruto still a bit confused but understands the purpose of the eyes. How can I turn them off Naruto asked Oblivion and there was silence. Oblivion Naruto said, waiting for a response. I have no idea. Oblivion said and this caused Naruto to sweat drop at hearing this. I think you might need this. Then suddenly a pair of glasses appeared before him. Naruto grabs it and puts it on. Then his eyes changed back to normal and his vision was returning to normal. All the lines and points disappeared. Those glasses deactivate your eyes. And don't worry those glasses are magical. So they won't be destroyed and also when you ever lost them. They will always return at your pocket. Oblivion said before he ended the transmission. Naruto looks back at two thugs. Hey how about we raid some of the villagers tonight? One the thugs and soon the two let out a chuckle which made Naruto glare at the man remove his glasses, activating his powers. Naruto pulls out a kunai and uses his great speed to move to another tree and landed quietly to the ground. Naruto quickly rushes one of the thugs. The thugs were cut surprised by Naruto's sudden appearance and before they could pull out their weapon. Naruto delivered the blow on the left thug. Slash. Naruto used the kunai and traced the line that he saw on the thug and the thug was split in two. Naruto turns to the second thug who was scared shitless in what happened to his companion. SS shit. Get Awa the thug didn't finish because Naruto throws the kunai to his head and instantly killing the man. Naruto let out Asaya picks up the kunai from the thug head and puts back the glasses on, turning off his powers. You two should have kept your mouth shut. With that Naruto walks away, completely tired in what just transpired today. Chapter 6. Naruto finally arrives at Izuna home and enters the house. I'm back Naruto said with a lazy tone and immediately he was greeted by his sisters and teammates. Welcome back honey chan Naruto kun the three girls greeted him and Naruto just smiled and nodded at them before looking around. Where's our senseis and Ichiha san? Naruto said and Naruko was the one who answered him. Achan and Makoto Oba san went out for a while and Kakashi Nyasen is accompanying them. Naruto just nodded his head then he heard a grumbling sound and looks to where it was coming from and saw it was Sakura grumbling stomach that causes the pink hair girl to blush then soon the other girl's stomach grumble also. Naruto just let out a chuckle that causes the girls to glare at him. I'm guessing that you're all hungry now. Naruto asked and the girls just shyly nodded at him, then Tsunami enters the room and notices Naruto. Oh, welcome back Naruto-san. I'm about to make dinner. Tsunami said dinner and Naruto decided he would make dinner instead. Tsunami-san, how about I make dinner instead? Naruto said and Tsunami was surprised at his offer. That's very nice of you Naruto-san, but I can do it myself. After all you are a guest in this house. Tsunami said and Naruto shook his head and smiled at Tsunami. Nonsense, I insist that I would make dinner tonight Tsunami-san and I promise you that it would be a feast. Naruto said and Naruko started imagining all the foods that her brother gonna make that causes her to start drooling but quickly snap out of it and wipe the drool on her face. 
I agree with Ani Chan, Tsunami san. His foods are the best. Naruko said happily, and Tsunami thought for a minute before nodding her head. All right, Naruto san, I accept your offer. Tsunami said, and Naruto thanked Tsunami before going to the kitchen, pulls out a scroll and opens it, and a puff of smoke, and suddenly reveals a big amount of ingredients that was laid on the table and bunch of cooking materials. Well, I think I'll start cooking one of my delicious meals. Time skip, we're back. Kishina said as she, Mikoto and Kakashi enters the house. Hi Kachan. Naruko and Satsuki said in unison. Is Naruto come back? Kishina asked and the two genins nodded at her. Hi, he's at the kitchen and cooking us for dinner. Naruko said and Kishina eyes widen at this. Naruto kun is cooking. Kishina said in shock. This was the first time she was hearing this, and then she noticed the small drool that was on Naruko's face that made her look confused. Naruko chan, you're drooling. Kishina said. Naruko snapped out of her thoughts and quickly wiped the drool, and a blush appeared on her face. Sorry Kachan Naruko said, and Kishina just smiled at before she could speak again, Naruto suddenly came from the kitchen and was wearing a white apron. All finish. Naruto said as he wipes the sweat on his face. He looks at the room and saw that his mother and his other senseis are finally back. Welcome back sensei. Please prepare the table so we can eat. The food will be out in a few minutes. Naruko please help me with the foods. Naruto instructed and a megawatt grin appeared on his sister face and skipped happily into the kitchen. Ashina and Makoto looked at each other and shrugged while Kakashi closed his book and put it back to the pocket of his pants. Time skip, soon everyone was on the table, and Naruto comes out from the kitchen with a big pot of rice in his hands. Soon bunch of Naruto came out with large of platters of five kinds of main dishes and large pot of soup. Oh my. This is a lot of food. Tsunami said with a shocked look on her face. When did you have time to cook all this Achi? Kishina asked. Shadow clones. They have their benefits you know and tricks I learned from Shiranai chan Naruto said and Kishina was about to ask again, but Naruto beat her. You can ask later. It time to eat. Kishina complied and Naruto started serving the rice in the rice bowls and passed it one by one. It wasn't the typical rice but fried rice with egg and vegetable bits with Naruto pouring soup into the bowls. Then everyone sat down on their chair started to eat. Thanks for the food everyone said before they started digging some of the foods on the table. As soon everyone took a bite of Naruto cooking. They either had a shock look on their faces or bliss look on their faces. The rice also tastes weird to feel like I'm eating chicken. Mikoto said with shock look on her face as she tasted the heavenly food that Naruto made. She's right did you take long because of the rice? Kakashi asked her. The rice may as well be chicken made to look like rice. The fried rice has ingredients that stimulate appetite. I used a nice combination of diced red perilla leaves, yumabashi pits that stimulate appetite, and I cooked the fried eggs in light spicy oil, so even a child can happily eat it without complaining of getting too hot. Said Naruto as he started to explain about his cooking. As for why it tastes like chicken, I stuffed the rice into the kitchen and boiled it in a specially treated water containing spices, condiments and cooking liquor. Prolonged boiling led the rice to absorb the flavor of the chicken and the water. And using a special cooking jutsu, what should take hours of boiling, it only took one so I could fry it with a perilla, yumabashi, egg and onion leaves. You're kidding Kakashi asked with wide eyes. Nope Naruto said, but didn't further explain. And the soup? Satsuki asked. Thicken soup with thick chicken broth using the bones of chickens I used to make the rice. The grilled chicken chunks over there have very mild chili, chicken dumplings with ground chicken cooked in just the right amount of oyster sauce and honey, chicken with stir-fried vegetables, and chicken spring rolls with also fried vegetables, completing all four main dishes. Naruto said and everyone was speechless at his explanation. Wow was all the people in the table could say to Naruto cooking. Now enough talking. Time to eat. Naruto said and everyone again started digging at Naruto cooking. Soon everything was done eating and the plates and pots are completely empty. I'm so stuffed. Sakura said as pat her stomach. I couldn't eat another bite. Me too. Satsuki said with content look on her face. Me three Naruko said. Oh my god I'm so stuffed Azuna said as he sighed in bliss. You're a first rate chef. Actually that were only third rate plates you ate Azuna said, and besides, I'm still learning some of the second rate cooking. So technically I'm just a third rate chef. Naruto said as he helps Tsunami with cleaning the dishes from the table. Everyone look at him with wide eyes. Grid rate. On each hand those foods are very delicious. There's no way they are third rated. Naruko said with shock look on her face. Naruto just gave her an amused smile and said to her. Sorry, Naruko-chan, but that's the reality. Naruto said and Mikoto decided to speak to Naruto. Naruto-kun, can I have the recipes of your foods? I would really like to learn to cook them. Mikoto asked with a smile on her face. Naruto looks at her blank look on his face. No Naruto said with blank look on his face, and this caused Mikoto and everyone else to look surprised. But why? 
Satsuki asked. Because it's my recipe and I have no intention of sharing it to anyone. Besides it would take too long to cook. You need to have certain amount of skills to create them. Naruto said. Makoto was to talk again, but Naruto beat her. Ask question later when Tsunami-san and I are done cleaning up. Mikoto decided to shut her mouth while Naruto and Tsunami began doing their work. Soon when Naruto was done they all gathered in the guest room and were sitting on the floor. Alright Sachi, please tell where you learned to cook like that. Kishina asked. She never thought that Naruto could cook like that. Like I said before Shiro Niasen is the one who thought me how to cook and other things, while Arthurian Ichin thought me combat practice. Naruto explained, and everyone was still skeptical at Naruto's story. Then how did you meet them? Kakashi asked, you all remembered the yellow light that you saw when I fought Zabuza correct? Naruto said and everyone nodded in agreement. That yellow light was a special item that allowed me to be teleported in another world and that where I met them. I spent at least 20 years learning under them. I find that incredibly hard to believe Naruto-kun. Mikoto said and Naruto looks at her dead straight in the eyes. Then tell me how the hell was I been able to create a weapon out of thin air. It would be impossible for Fuenjutsu or any other form of chakra since no one has that kind of skill before. Naruto said. This made Mikoto keep quiet, but Satsuki was curious at Naruto's powers. What do you mean by creating from thin air Naruto-kun? Satsuki asked and Naruto mentally sighs and closes his eyes and took a breath. Gray saw Naruto whispered and Kanshu and Bakuya materialized in his hands. Everyone was surprised at this, and Naruto opened his eyes. This is what I mean Satsuki-chan. I have a skill called projection magic that allows me to project any kind of materials that came from my mind. Naruto explained. Everyone eyes widen in shock in hearing this. Wait. You mean that you could create any weapons that you want from your imagination? Naruko asked with shock look on her face. Yeah, you could say that, but I needed to know the materials that is needed to make the weapon and along how the weapon was created. Naruto said before he made the two blades disappeared. So basically you have a mind of an 32 years old that has a body of a 12 years old and has powers that could easily match the power of a cage. Kakashi summed up in what he is seeing so far. I don't know. Naruto said with shrugged he wasn't sure how powerful he was, since he needs to retrain his powers again. Most of my powers were sealed again. My offensive spells along with the projection magic, but I don't have defensive spells since the still lock inside me unless something triggers it. Naruto explained. Why is your powers sealed? Sakura asked with curiosity. Don't know but that was the condition when I returned to this world in body of a five years old. Naruto said. Can you show us the item? Naruko asked as she was curious about the yellow light item that appeared in Naruto fight against Sabuza. Everyone was also curious as well Naruto nodded at her. Naruto closed his eyes and extends his hand. Soon a yellow blinding light happened that made everyone look away. When the light was gone everyone looks back and they saw a beautiful scabbard that was made out of gold with blue markings. It's beautiful. Kishina said in awe as she saw the scabbard. Naruto smiles as he saw the sheath that was placed on the ground. This sheath is called Avalon. The ever-distant utopia. A treasure of Arthurian Nietzsche that shows dignity and nobility. This scabbard is one of the most powerful weapons that I ever known. Naruto said with a smile on his face as he remembers Arthurian and the days that spent together when he was training under her and Shiru. What do you mean powerful? This looks like more of a relic than a weapon for defense. Kakashi said. This sheath has the power to stop aging, in short partial immortality. Naruto sat and this made everyone eyes widen in shock. I immortality Mikoto said in shock. She couldn't believe that this thing can give immortality. Yes, but that's not the only ability. Naruto said and everyone looks at him, asking for more information. This scabbard can also regenerate any wounds even vital parts. For example if my heart was destroyed it can easily restore it back before I could die. Naruto said and everyone was shocked in hearing this. But not done, this very weapon has the strongest defense I would dare say that this scabbard can even deflect a powerful Bijadama from a tailed beast itself. This scabbard is the ultimate defense of anyone who has possession of it. Naruto finished as he remembers what Arthurian told him about Avalon. He made Avalon disappeared and looks at everyone and all he saw the shock look on their faces. Can he blame them? He just told everyone that he was immortal and the fact that he has the ultimate against a biju. After a few minutes of silences Kakashi was the first one to break the silence. Naruto that is the most far-fetched story I ever heard. I mean that scabbard that can deflect a bijudama. That is impossible. Kakashi said using his logical side than believe in Naruto words. Would you like to prove me that the powers of Avalon is true? Naruto asked. And how would you prove that? Sakura asked with curiosity. She also was skeptical in what Naruto said. I'll stab myself in the heart. Naruto said and everyone eyes widen in horror in hearing this. No. Everyone shouted not wanting for Naruto to risk his life. I suggest that we all take a sleep for now. We'll start training tomorrow. Kishina said. 
Good idea Kashina-chan. Let's all take a rest now. Makoto said. Everyone nodded in agreement and decided to rest for the night. Next day, everyone was in the forest that was near Tazuna house. The three senseis were now standing in front of the four genins in front of them. Now kids, we are going to do some simple exercise today. We are now going to learn how to walk on water with the use of our chakra. Kakashi said. Naruto raised his hands and the one-eyed and pointed at him. Yes Naruto. I already know this exercise. Naruto said and everyone was surprised at this, but the senseis didn't believe him. Then please demonstrate it. Mikoto said and Naruto just shrugged in response. Naruto jumps towards the small pond with chakra on his feet and landed on the water and stayed on the surface. Soon he started running around the pond to show that already done the exercise. Everyone was saws this and had a few reactions. The three senseis were shocked and impressed, while three genin girls had sparkle in their eyes as they saw how cool Naruto done it. Told you. Naruto said to his three teachers. Well seeing that Naruto already done this. You girls will be doing this exercise. Kashina said and three girls nodded in response. Can I practice my powers? Naruto bluntly asked. He was bored and he wanted to relearn his powers if possible get them stronger. As long that you someone is watching you. Kashina-chan, why don't you watch Naruto train while I will help train the girls in this exercise? Mikoto suggested. She also see this an opportunity for Naruto to have a bonding time with his mother. Great idea Mikoto-chan. Kashina said with a grin on her face. Is that alright with you, Naruto? Mikoto asked and Naruto shrugged in response. Whatever Naruto said. He really didn't care if someone would watch him. Then he jumps out from the small pond and walks away from the group with Kashina following behind him. Kakashi, please guard Tazuna San Makoto ordered, and Kakashi nodded before he vanished in poof of smoke. Makoto smiled before looking at the three genin girls. Alright girls now we'll start the training. Naruto and Kashina. Hours has passed since Naruto and Kashina left the others, and it was already sunset. They were now an unknown part of the forests, and the place was no pierce with multiple swords. Naruto was on the ground and panting, while Kashina was leaning on the tree with concern look on her face. Sachi-kun. Kashina said and she was about to approach Naruto when the blonde stops with a hand signal. No pant pant I'm done yet. Trace on. Naruto shouted as the Chinese blades, Kanshu and Bakuya appeared in his hand. He throws them in a powerful distance and created another pair of the Chinese blades. Naruto rushes towards one of the tress with first pairs of the Chinese blades that he create coming back like a boomerang and was towards the tree to where Naruto was going. He slashed the second white blade that was shattered to pieces, then black blade of the first pair stabs towards the tree, then followed with another blade strike from second black blade that was shattered to pieces, with the white blade of the first pair stabbing also on the tree. The tree has now an X mark shape on the front, while back was the first pair of the blades. Thrace. Over edge. Naruto shouted as he spread his arms, and another pair of the Chinese blades appeared his hands, but blades suddenly change into long sword blades with feather splitters on the edges. Slash. Slash. Naruto was now behind the tree with the two long swords in hands. Soon the tree was cut in an X pattern to where the first pair of blades mark it and falls to the ground. Kashina could only stare in shock in what Naruto has done. She was surprised remarkable the move was and was surprised at how Naruto performed it. Sachi-kun has great talent in Kenjutsu Kashina thought. She promised herself that she would teach Naruto the Uzumaki-style sword play. She saw Naruto falls back as the two giant long swords disappeared in his hands. Kashina quickly rushes towards Naruto and saw that Naruto was completely unconscious. Kashina checked his pulses and it was beating. Kashina let out a sigh and decided to carry Naruto on her back and walking back towards Tazuna house. Days later, everyone was training for the passing days. Naruko, Satsuki and Sakura has finally finished their water walking training with the help of Makoto, along with some special physical exercises. Well Kakashi was still guarding Tazuna, but Makoto and Kashina would have their shadow clone spread around the bridge as reinforcement. While Naruto spent his days training his magic to point he could continue to fight for several hours thanks to Uzumaki's stamina and the crazy regiment that he made that would increase his body stamina along with physical abilities while his projection magic and other offensive magic started slowly to return to where he could use his magic more often and faster using them than before. Kashina would sometimes have a sparring match with Naruto to help develop his sword skills. Naruto was against the idea first since he didn't want any help but he knew that his mother was a powerful sword user. So Naruto agreed to this, but Naruto would not hold back, he even would go so far as throwing three to four blades to Kashina, but the crimson hair woman proved to Naruto why she was a par with her husband, Minato. She was able to use her chakra chain and use them as shield towards blades that was launched at her. But overall Naruto started to see that Kashina really helped him, so he started to gain a small respect towards the woman. 
Also during those days Naruto met someone named Haku, but Naruto knew that Haku was the hunter nin that saved Zabuza, but decided to not kill her, since Naruto could not sense any malice intent from her, and decided to act like he doesn't know her about being accomplice of Zabuza. The two meeting went out without any problem at all. Now everyone was at Tazuna and was eating dinner. Dinner was going well when suddenly a young boy named Inari started to speak. Why do you guys bother to try so hard? No matter how hard you train, you're still no match for Gato's men. No matter what glorious claims you make or how hard you work, the weak will only end up getting killed. Inari shouted at the group during dinner, his eyes burning with hatred, looking at the Kanoha ninjas gathered around the dinner table. Ashina, Mikoto and Kakashi looks at him pity, since they already knew that Inari lost his stepdad, Naruko grin turned to a frown, Satsuki glares at the boy, while Sakura mouth turn into a thin line. The atmosphere turns tense. Naruto slowly stands up and gave an icy glare at the kid. Why we try so hard? Are you an idiot? We train because we wanted to save the village. Naruto said to Inari. Inari retorted back, but with shaky tone. I, I told you that it's hopeless. K. Kaiza was my hero, H. He told me that heroes exist and that you would be able to follow your dreams if you worked hard enough. But he died, Gato killed him. He was the hero of the wave, the person I dreamed of being. If Gato killed him, you guys aren't going to be able to beat him. There are no heroes and if they try to be heroes they die and Ari was sniffling now, rubbing his eyes as tears made their way down his cheeks. Everyone grew silence, but it was shattered when Naruto started to speak. No heroes huth at is the most foolish thing I ever heard. Naruto said. Inari looks at him with glare while everyone just stayed quiet and listens to him. If you don't believe in heroes then Kaiza's sacrifice was nothing. Naruto said coldly. Inari gritted his teeth in anger. Why why you, tell me something kid. What is pain? Naruto asked as he looks up. Um, pain, it originates from sacrifice and takes away the ones that we love a bit it leaves two choices. Naruto said as looks at Inari in the eyes. Either you sit back and cry and endure the agony, or you would fight back for what you believe in. Naruto finished and Inari looks of shock eyes while ninjas and Inari mother and grandfather looks at him surprised look on their faces. Naruto placed a hand on Inari head and gave a small smile. If there are no heroes in Aribicum one and give hope to the people. Naruto said before walking away from the table, leaving everyone in their own thoughts. Naruto stops in the hallway of the house and closes his eyes as he looks up at the ceiling. After all I'm going to a hero. That's why I needed to train. To get better, to grow stronger, to be able protect those who are dear to me. Naruto thought as he looks at his hands and clenches it. He vows to get stronger than he is now. He decided to walk back to his room and decided to call it for the night. He was tired from his training and sparring match against Kashina. Next day, Naruto opened his eyes and quickly sat up. He looks around and saw the room was empty, and that made him realize something. Damn it. I overslept. Naruto cursed he quickly changed his clothes and headed out of the room when suddenly stops in his tracks, as he heard a voices from outside. Leave my mom alone. Inari voice was heard, and Naruto immediately pulls out two kunai, and slowly opens the door to take a peek. He looks at the small opening and used reinforcement magic along with chakra to have a better vision from the distance. He saw Inari clinging against one of the two thugs outside the house, and one of them has Tsunami as a hostage. One of the thugs pushed down Inari and pointed a sword against Inari. Without second thought Naruto quickly came out of the room and aimed his two kunais carefully and throws it. Thud. The two kunais hit thugs in the neck that made the two thugs fall back to the ground, with the blood coming out from their neck. Inari and Tsunami eyes widen in shock as they saw the two thugs were now dead. What just happened? Inari said. He was shocked in what just transpired. But his cuts were cut off when Tsunami hugged him close. You were brave kid. Inari turns around and saw Naruto walking out from the house. He saw Naruto gave him a small smirk. Good thing that you managed to delay them so I could finish them. Naruto said. Inari eyes widen in shock. You did that? Tsunami asked. Naruto looked at the mother and nodded. It was necessary or else you would have taken away from Inari. Naruto said and Tsunami nodded in understanding and thanked the blonde. The blonde looks back at Inari and gave a small smile. Like I said before Inari if there are no heroes then become one. Looks like I'm gonna take the role of a hero. Naruto said. Inari eyes widen in shock and Naruto approaches him and pats him on the head. I'll be back and ending Gato's reign once and for all. Wish me luck kid. Naruto said before he rushes towards the forest and heading to the bridge. Inari just watch him from the distance as his words keep repeating on his head. If there are no heroes then become one. Inari puts on a determined look and on his face and quickly run towards the house. Inari. Where are you going? Tsunami asked. Inari looks back at her and she saw the determined look on her son's face. To become a hero. Inari said before quickly running towards back to the house with Kashina and the others. On the bridge Kashina was battling against Abusa with Mikoto on her side. 
Kakashi was dealing with a water clone of Zabuza and couple of missing nins that Zabuza recruited, while Haku was dealing with Satsuki and Maruko. Sakura was guarding Tazuna for any ambush attack that headed straight for the bridge builder. This is getting bad. We can't keep this up. Kashina said as she dodges the attack. The bridge was covered with Zabuza mists, making hard for her and the rest of her team to fight. Zabuza suddenly appeared on Kashina and swung his giant weapon towards Kashina. Kashina reacted quickly and ducked to avoid the attack. Then out of nowhere Makoto appeared in front of Zabuza and swings her own blade, but Zabuza quickly jumps away to avoid being cut into two. Zabuza quickly hid from the mist which annoyed the two women. Damn, with you two working it's really hard to fight you both. I guess that you women are a par with the rakage along with his brother in teamwork. Zabuza said. Kashina and Makoto were known as the Black Crimson Deaths during the Third Shinobi War when they are being sent to do a mission together. They were league against A and B combo of Kumo. But this is the end. Zabuza voice echoes in the mist. Kashina and Makoto prepare themselves when suddenly Zabuza appeared between them. Kashina and Makoto turn around and saw that Zabuza blade was heading towards Makoto. Die. Zabuza shouted as his blade was getting close to Makoto's sides. Makoto. Kashina shouted in horror as she saw that her best friend was about to be cut down. But Naruko and Satsuki. Naruko and Satsuki are inside the dome of glass mirrors that their enemy, Haku made. They were covered with cuts from Haku attacks and were on their knees and panting. Makoto Kashina voice was heard and Satsuki eyes widen in hearing this. Hachan. Satsuki shouted as she turns her attention away from Haku, who was in mirror saw an opportunity to kill Satsuki. She quickly throws three of her senbans towards Satsuki neck. Naruko saw this and quickly stands up but falls to the ground. Satsuki. Naruko shouted as she saw her friend was about to be killed. Satsuki turned around and saw senbans heading towards her. Plang. A sound of mental was heard. Naruko and Satsuki eyes widen in shock on which she saw. It was Naruto, Naruko brother standing in front of Satsuki with his two pair of blades. The male blonde male has just saved Satsuki. Ani chan. Naruko said. She saw Naruto turns to her with small smile. Sorry, I'm late Amato and I'm a clone. Hishina and Makoto, die. Zabuza shouted as his blade was getting close to Makoto's sides. Makoto. Kashina shouted in horror as she saw that her best friend was about to be cut down. Plang. Hishina eyes widen in shock as she Zabuza attack was stopped, but really shock on who stopped the attack. Man, that was a close call the voice said. That voice belonged to Naruto, her son. Naruto was currently struggling to stop Zabuza attack with his two signature blades. Mikoto quickly jumps away, and Naruto let out a war cry as he pushed Zabuza away. Zabuza looks at Naruto and smirked beneath his bandage mask. You finally showed Gaki. Yeah, overslept but I'm here now. Naruto said as he twirls his white blade in his hands. So, are we going to finish our fight? Zabuza said wanting some redemption against the blonde, but to his surprise Naruto shook his head. Not this time Zabuza. Not until we finished our unwanted guest. Naruto said. The three adults looks at him confused. What do you mean, Urkiri? A voice shouted and that belonged to Kakashi. Kakashi came out from the mist, and his hand was covered with lightning and was aiming at Zabuza. Naruto quickly placed some reinforcement magic to his hand along with Chakra, and quickly appeared near Zabuza and grabbed Kakashi's hand and stopped his jutsu. Naruto what are you doing? Kakashi demanded why the blonde stops him when suddenly a sound of clapping caught everyone's attention. The mist was almost gone, and everyone saw Satsuki and Naruko along with Naruto clone and Haku, making the two mothers sigh and in relief, but turn back to the sound of clapping. The girls immediately runs towards their mother to join the group, while Naruto clone was besides Haku near the end side of the bridge that was out of the way of the group. Soon Tazuna and Sakura joined the group. The ninja saw a group of mercenary with different weapons with them, but what made Zabuza anger blood boil was the small man in the middle of the army. This was Gato the tyrant of the wave. Oh you are getting your ass kaked so disappointing. Gato said with cruel smirk on his face. Gato, what's the meaning of this? Zabuza demanded. I was never going to pay you and your little mercenary group. You were all too expensive I was waiting for opportunity to kill you all. Now since you are all tired I would be killing you all now. Gato said before turning to his men. Kill them all but save the women for our stress relief. The army roared in agreement and every ninja was angry now. You little bastard. Zabuza-san, please let me do this. Naruto said and Zabuza along with everyone else turns to him. But the hell Gaki Zabuza was cut off when he saw Naruto's eyes. He saw Naruto's eyes narrowed at the army, and the eyes were changing colors. Zabuza saw in Naruto's eyes were the eyes of a predator, and the army was his prey. Zabuza decided to let Naruto do it. Fine but I want a rematch after this. Understandable. Naruto said as he slowly walking away from the group. Sachi wait. Don't bother that Gaki of yours wants to kill them Zabuza said. He'll get himself killed out there. Mikoto shouted at him, and Zabuza scoffed at this. 
Does trust the brat. His Aishi has the look of veteran soldier. The Gaki might do something big. Just trust him. Zabuza said. Everyone looks at Naruto with concern look on their faces and decided to listen to Zabuza's words. Kill the brat. Gato shouted as the army roared and charges towards the blonde who was halfway on their side. Scumsel of you are scumsel of you deserve to die. Naruto muttered as he closed his eyes before opening his again and they change into multiple colors. Grace on. Stand by. Naruto roared and soon thousands of blades started to materialize around the sky. Everyone was shocked at seeing this while the army halts in their track and now was completely scared. Naruto extends his hand and the blades all pointed at army. All of you shall die for your crimes against this country. Continues Barrage. Naruto shouted then the sword started raining down the army. Everyone could only watch as Naruto massacred the army with his thousands of blades raining down on the army. Hashina, Mikoto, Haku and Kakashi could only watch in horror as they saw massacre while Naruko, Satsuki and Sakura puked their breakfast, and finally Zabuza turned pale white as he just realized how strong Naruto is and can't imagine being impaled by thousands of those blades that keeps coming non-stop. Soon the attack finally stops and the smoke being cleared. When the smoke was gone they saw bodies and blood scattered around the bridge, leaving only Gato alive. Naruto started walking towards Gato as he passed towards the scums that he killed. Gato was slowly backing away from the blonde with tears flowing down his faces. He didn't expect this at all. He didn't expect the brat could kill his army like that. Please don't kill me. Gato pleaded his pathetic life while Naruto slowly walking towards him. I'll give anything you want. Money, power, Womack. Gato was cut off when Naruto kicked him the gut. Naruto stared at Gato with narrowed eyes. I don't need anything from you scum. What I want is your head. Trace on. Naruto said as he started projecting a weapon on his hand. Zabuza's eyes widen in shock on what he saw Naruto hand. The Kubikurabunch his own weapon in the hands of Naruto. How the hell the brat copied the weapon Zabuza thought he never seen that kind of thing before. Naruto looks at Gato with anger in his eyes as he grabbed the massive board sword with two hands. Die. Naruto shouted as he swung the Kubikurabunch horizontally. Squelch. Gato's head was cut off from his body before it falls to the ground. Everyone saw Naruto kill Gato. Tazuna was the first one to break the silence. I can't believe it. Gato is finally deeds finally dead. Tazuna as he couldn't believe what just transpired and started thinking that it was a dream. Naruto made the weapon disappeared before he picks up Gato's head before walking back to the group. Aki Zabuza said as he stares at Naruto. That was brutal. He never seen that kind massacre before and this kid was responsible for it. Naruto just turned to him with his eyes back to normal and smirked at him. Never underestimate me Zabuza because you might end up like them. Naruto said before walking away with Gato head. Hey. A voice shouted and everyone looks to where it come from and saw Inari, Tsunami and good people of the wave with weapons in their hands. Are we late? Yeah, you were kid. Naruto said to Inari with smirk on his face. And look what I got. He held Gato high above him so that everyone could see it. Soon the people of the wave started as Gato reign finally ended. The wave was finally free and it's all because of one hero and that was Naruto Uzumaki Namek is the saber of Konoha. If there are no heroes then become one. What if God like Naruto neglected because of a prophecy harem? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.